energetic but sweet, sweet dog who's really looking to be a good family pet. Please learn more about Duchess on the web at montgomerycountymd.gov slash ASD or give us a call at 240-773-5900. You can always stop by the center at 7315 Moncaster Mill Road in Durwood. We're open every day except Wednesday and come on in and visit Duchess and all the other wonderful animals we have here. With that, we close this edition of County Report this week. Remember to like us on Facebook and to join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm on Quinette Crosby. Thank you for watching. He plays it straight but makes it so swinging every time. Call him for the time. Do you hear him? So basic and the heartbeat of the bass. Jump with bassy. Just in case he has gone a little little crazy. That's it. Tap your feet. Call to order this session of the Tacoma Park City Council. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Stewart. Here. Councilmember Kovar. Councilmember Mayo. Councilmember Qureshi. Here. Councilmember Siemens. Present. Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Schultz. Here. Great. All right. Tonight is our work, our last Monday night budget work session. I'm going to uh, turn it over to the city manager to go through her presentation on departmental and non-departmental budgets, and then we'll have um, a bit on our uh, reconciliation list. Thank you very much. I'm, my intention, um, by always by scheduling the non-departmental and departmental uh, budget work session as the third one, is that it's in some respects the more boring one. It's our normal operations. Mm -hmm. Um, in that uh, it's, it's what pays for our, our normal kind of day-to-day -day work that's a little different than those things that are special capital purchases or projects and uh, those oriented towards council goals. And so we're going to start off um, with an overview of personnel and non-departmental, uh, general government, and then go on to the other departments. I wanted to start with the personnel schedule, uh, which shows that um, proposed for FY18, a, a small increase of 0.3 FTE, full-time equivalent staff person. Uh, this comes from a combination of adding some part-time hours for some folks um, and uh, deletion of uh, some positions as well. In terms of the overall expenses for the, um, for the various departments, one of the things that I noticed is that when you look in the budget book, the, um, the, the overall expenses also include the information on debt service and a couple other things. So it's a little hard to focus just on the departmental expenses. So I've included those here. The um, overall uh, General fund departmental expenses come to about $22 million. The overall operating costs, including personnel, increases about 2.3%. Um, of this, though, the supplies and services only increase about $35,000, or 0.5%. The 2.3% um, reflects um, a combination of the increase in personnel costs uh, with this very small increase in supplies and services. One of the things that, um, there's a couple things going on related to personnel costs. Uh, the first is that we're um, hopefully winding up negotiations with our two unions on the 
um, con three-year contracts for each of the two bargaining units that um, are present with the city of Tacoma Park. 2.1% is the um, ECI, which is the cost index for, uh, low, for government employees um, for this area. And so the 2.3% um, um, also uh, reflects the fact that we have some money that we put for um, the increases in um, for people who get distinguished, so they get a little bit more. Plus, there's increases that come with health insurance and the other kind of personnel benefits that uh, are reflected. Of the full-time equivalent employees, um, because we get a good amount of money from um, other sources for certain departments, the number of FTEs by department that's paid for by Tacoma Park City tax dollars um, can be a, a good amount uh, less. And for example, um, the communications only has 0.75. That's because our media specialist, some of his activities really can't be charged to cable TV. Um, but because we get the cable uh, grant and operating expenses, um, we can also we can pay for uh, five employees plus um, two employees in the um, information um, technology uh, division. Um, we also I want to reflect the the money where it says percent of total FY18 dollars is that. Um, this is really by taking the amount of money that is for those various departments. So I didn't calculate by FTEs because, especially with the communications, we move that, those positions around and it crosses departmental lines. But when you take the police and speed camera divisions, uh, departments, uh, only 36% of their budgets, um, it comes from city tax dollars. One of the things I also noticed in going through the, um, the budget book that we will be um, adding to for the final document, but certainly I think is needed for clarity, is what comes out of the non-departmental um, account. And so I wanted to just um, put this out here so that you have a, a sense of the kinds of things that are covered in, in non-departmental and how the uh, monetary changes have occurred. Um, the non-departmental account uh, includes a number of personnel-related costs, including workers' compensation insurance, um, recognition programs, uh, and our general tuition reimbursement and training budget. Uh, I highlighted the 720000 for workers' compensation insurance. When we were preparing the budget, we put in the same amount that we had for this year, um, but we learned today that we can save $150,000. And Alexis says she's not the one to take the credit, but I'm giving her a lot of credit. It was wonderful news when we got that from our uh, insurance folks today. Um, this is because we've um, worked really hard to keep our risk down and um, some injuries down. So whether luck or preparation together, uh, we will, um, I, and I have added to my reconciliation list, a savings of $150,000. The, um, the legit insurance cost and bond is for um, property type insurance, insurance for our cars and that kind of thing. Then we have the community events um, category that has the Arts and Humanities Commission, Folk Festival, Jazz Festival, Fourth of July accounts. We have um, a variety of um, kind of things to help the community, um, a variety of community grants, emergency assistance, our partnership program for the council priorities, um, scholarship funds. Uh, the housing reserve I want to address for a moment. We put the, we allocate the housing, res the monies for the housing reserve into this account and then it gets transferred into the reserve. So it has to be appropriated here first and then moved into the reserve. So that f represents the 400,000 we put in in the last budget and the 300,000 I proposed for this budget. 
it makes the totals a little strange. So I just wanted to kind of alert you that they disappear when it, for the next year. It's a different category, but uh, that that's how that works. Uh, the tax rebate program is um, the program where low and moderate income people who qualify for the state um, uh, tax credit, home state, homeowner tax credit program, uh, that we provide a 50% match. And um, this year, it, was, it turned out to be about 140000 so we've budgeted that for next year, but we would pay whatever is needed uh, through that program. And then we have some miscellaneous funds, and um, not this year, we, we don't need that. Um, and there, we have a charter required general contingency fund. Um, I also highlighted under scholarship funds, there's a yellow block there. Um, in the legislative budget, there had been $25,000 that um, we had kind of set aside for council goals, and we had then realized that we had meant to put in 5000 for the Montgomery College program again for next year. So that's proposed, and if indeed it gets passed, it'll move into this account um, under the scholarship funds. Does anybody have any questions about this particular screen? We can go back to it, but I, it's something new that I have not shown you before. Ah, there you are. That's when it's a cooler day. Um, so of the 25,000 that had been in the, in the legislative items, we had identified 5,000 for the um, college program, Montgomery College program. The other 20,000 we had been thinking about as um, potentially a match to the feasibility study of uh, aquatics facility and other facility at Washington Venice Hospital. Um, we are very hopeful that we do not need to put our funds towards that. Uh, because I think the, council, the county council has a, a, a good proposal for that. Um, nevertheless, that amount at this point is undetermined in the legislative budget, in your budget. Um, in, also under general government, we have funds included for election. And I just note the two information systems, FTEs paid by the cable grant. And basically, uh, our, manage, our office um, reduced our sales by a half of an FTE. Some of the goals that we have, and there's, there's many others, but some that were uh, mentioned by our um, senior leadership staff were for human resources. In response to the recently considered uh, employee satisfaction survey, which I sent out a, a link to for you at the report, uh, we want to focus efforts on performance management, training, uh, compensation programs and employee recognition. We will be doing a compensation study. Uh, it's one of our regular every like three years we have to do a compensation study uh, in FY18. In finance, we want to get the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Budget Documents, uh, and we will be working with the Council on the Review of Financial Policies. And um, one of the items that the Deputy City Manager noted was that we would um, we're excited that the city's um, technology steering committee is rolling out a new email, calendaring, and collaborative, collaborative work software system. So we're finally moving past what we've got. In public works, um, all the numbers are in the budget document. There's nothing significant about the, the numbers. Um, the goals are to update the city's tree inventory and work to develop methods to increase the tree canopy, review the stormwater calculations and plan future stormwater activities to meet our requirements, undertake a second green home certification competition with the Car Free Challenge, which actually will be starting very shortly and where it's, it seems like an exciting thing that will uh, work across the city. And then we're also preparing to manage what will be a heavy staff workload on the Public Works Department as we're dealing with the Ethan Allen Gateway and the Flower Avenue Green Street projects. Uh, the one uh, thing to note also in the Public Works um, FTE count is that uh, we're increasing the FTEs by a slight percentage. It's because we are reducing the amount of paid contract cleaning staff um, for, and using some extra hours of our own staff for that. So it kind of, it makes better sense and I think it will work better for this particular time period. And it saves us money. 
for recreation, there's a focus on implementing initiatives that lead to youth success. And you know, uh, we mentioned before that there's the new outreach division. We'd have increased partnerships with local businesses, schools, and nonprofit organizations. And this outreach division would have a part-time position centered around community outreach. And uh, also, we begin uh, providing therapeutic recreation programs via a contract with an appropriate organization. And this is a big step forward, or I think it's a big step forward. It's a commitment by the city to at least have one therapeutic recreation program here or in the city of Tacoma Park um, on an ongoing basis. It pretty much means we have to keep up with it, as opposed to just once in a while having a special event or have somebody else rent space to provide it. It would be under our auspices. In HCD, um, we, the biggest thing is implementation of the Housing and Economic Development Strategic Plan. And we've mentioned that all the way through. I think it's going to be a major focus of all of our work. Um, and um, Ms. Daines noted um, some of the cost, <laughs> costs of home ownership now in Tacoma Park. Um, we want to advance affordable home ownership opportunities. And of course, there's other aspects to affordable um, housing. Um, but it notes that the price of the home in Tacoma Park is higher than in Silver Spring and also just higher than the general D.C. metro area now. And that's different than it had been. We also want to retain and expand current businesses um, and noting that um, businesses can pay a lot more for the um, personal property tax with the inventory tax portion, and that's something that we'll be looking at. We also want to continue our projects designed to promote use of alternative transportation. <laughs> and uh, now you can like aim it right at you, <laughs> Council Member Smith. Um, we've noticed that especially bike riding has really increased um, in, in Tacoma Park with the uh, bike share program, and so it's nice to encourage that. Um, and we'll see some of the opportunities, for example, on New Hampshire Avenue will be one of the presentations coming up. For City TV. Um, it's pretty much the same information, but we will be uh, really looking to use cable um, capital grants for some of our um, more, some of our uh, renovation work here with the library and elsewhere in the city. We've had a lot of discussion about the library. They have a few goals for the renovation period of time. Uh, which is develop, refine, and support the plans uh, for the additional and renovated library space, prepare for the relocation of library services and collections during the building renovation, and review of, and evaluate all the collections in terms of what's most relevant in a redesigned library for Tacoma Park. In addition to kind of thinking about how we um, provide services during the, the time of preparing for building and building the library. Um, they'd like to expand the reach of their new family Books to Action Social Justice Book Club, which has gotten uh, a lot of um, interest, um, and compile it, combine it with service activities and book lists focused on major issues of the day, continue to e increase resources available for all ages in multiple languages, and can, in the computer center, continue to distribute information and guidance concerning the evaluation of Rev news sources, what's, what's real and what's not real. In police, I went ahead and um, just showed the information about some of the revenue that comes into the police fund, uh, into the police department, um, that shows that um, the city tax funds only pay for 36% of their expenses. Um, 50, about 52% of the funding is from the county. Um, and from the state. The county is about 46.4%, the state 5.5%, and then there's some other um, items as well. And on a small note, on the county police rebate, which is the second line from the top, um, we actually got $26,500 more. Um, and that is because the county police rebate is done on a um, taxing basis and um, and so it has to be calculated differently than tax duplication. 
Um, so the in lieu of is, is what's considered the tax duplication funds. So we actually got a little bit over a million dollars um, on the county police rebate, and that's also been reflected in the reconciliation list. I think I was re given about five pages of goals for the police department, so I just took a few. Um, but I'm pleased that there's a lot of interest in identifying things that you'd like to do. Um, but I think it boils down to uh, continuing to enhance police community relations um, and involving um, youth initiatives, as well as improved tracking and involvement in community events. One of the things that they just had noticed is that they really didn't have a way of um, keeping track of the various community events so that they're on top of them or that they could list that they went to them. So that's one of the, that's one uh, thing to keep in terms of um, having all the officers aware of the various events, but also being able to share that information with others. Similarly, to improve communications with council and with community members, including tracking of victim notifications. This is making sure that um, when someone is uh, doing an investigation or um, there's regular notification of victims um, about how the case is proceeding and making sure that that's kept track of in, a, in an upfront way. Quarterly updates to council at least and additional information on the website. And of course, we'd like to continue the downward trend in crime. Um, the off the uh, three captains have started doing the monthly ComStat meetings again um, to, direct act to direct actions to address any crime trends or patterns targeting specific locations and to increase community neighborhood involvement in public safety activities or issues. We have uh, three remaining meetings related to the budget. Uh, we'll have a discussion of reconciliation tonight um, and then the two, um, the meeting on Wednesday when you'll do final budget reconciliation. With the final budget reconciliation uh, decisions on Wednesday night, we'll take them and put them into the form of the budget ordinances for the two readings. That's my formal presentation today. Um, and then I do have information as we go through the reconciliation discussion, but I didn't know if you had some questions about the information that I've provided here. Great, thank you. Anyone have any questions regarding the presentation? Councilmember Siemens. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just one observation, uh -huh. and, and uh, you mentioned um, taking some of the clean uh, and having it done by our own staff rather than yes. by consultants. And uh, my, and it's going to save us money, you hoo. Uh, <laughs> and my recollection is that uh, we stopped having staff do it and had the consultants come in because it was going to save us money. And I just feel like in a couple more iterations, this should become a profit center. Oh, there you go. No, it actually has to do, I think, more with, with which particular hours that work needs to be done and, and when it's more effective for us to have an outside. Uh, entity overseeing the work and other times when it's not. So as we keep evaluating, we adjusted some hours so it, it makes a little bit more sense for us. I know one of the uh, things that the council, uh, previous councils have been uh, interested in, in keeping track of or, or making sure that we are being responsible in using uh, contractors. That's right. And uh, that we're not using that as a way to circumvent uh, benefits. Absolutely. And in fact, um, Anytime we do do the contractors, we have to go through an entire pr um, process with our employees and the unions, as well as just our regular evaluation, which we did do. Um, we just got to a point where um, on one aspect, it makes sense to adjust it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Council Member Schultz. Um, in regard to the non-departmental uh, mm -hmm. slide six, there was information about the, the Tacoma Park Folk Festival which shows in this uh, fairly substantial jump from mm -hmm. prior years. And I know that mm -hmm. last year um, we apparently had allocated uh, $5,000. I think we actually had allocated 15. Right. We ended up um, dropping it down to five because they only needed five for what they were doing yeah. and the interim basis right. when they weren't having the folk festival. So we're just basically taking that 10 that we didn't spend and lumping it this year is the anniversary. Um, I mean, what's the thinking on this? I think this, they were, last year they had put in a request 
saying that for this year's budget, they were going to ask us for the 20,000 because I'm forgetting what the anniversary, what year it is, but it's an, it's an anniversary year this year. And so they were hoping to do more. Yeah, yeah. Right, we didn't just move it over. I think it was part yeah. of a budget amendment for this year, but the um, 20,000 was something that they had specifically asked for because they wanted to do a big thing for in FY18. Yeah, and we did receive an, a letter last year that had that told us that, yeah. and we, I can dig it up and find it, but it went to so, the full council. So it's, I, it's, I just am assuming that the, the uh, leadership issues that were, uh, you know, uh, taking their toll a year ago have been kind of worked out then with that group. I don't know the full status of yeah. it, but it does sound like they're moving forward. Good. Mm -hmm. um, One other question. Let me just find my question mark on one of the pieces mm -hmm. of paper. Oh, the therapeutic recreation. Can you yeah. elaborate? Actually, I'll have uh, Greg Clark get his book off his lap and <laughs> explain how that, how that is. It's especially geared to developmentally dis disabled people, but... Mm -hmm. so You've got to push the button. All right. There you go. Good evening. Um, the department put uh, $10,000 uh, in our budget to provide uh, therapeutic recreation services. We're actually going to contract out um, services with uh, an organization that provides those types of services mm -hmm. so that we can better meet the needs of uh, disabled residents in the city of Tacoma Park. The, the way that we have it now for, if you have kind of minor disabilities, we make accommodations in our regular programs. Uh, somebody may participate in a regular recreation program or they may participate with someone at no extra charge. Um, that, for example, if somebody is blind or something, they may bring along a companion. Um, but if you need a different kind of service, mm -hmm. this, is, this is for that other kind of um, for people who are, have graver disabilities. That's right. Okay. And, that, and, wouldn't and, really, that wouldn't really be able to just go along with the yeah, regular group. Yeah, no, I understand. I get the mm -hmm. picture. Okay. So this is kind of like an experiment, do you think, or is it because you said it's the first? It's kind nope. of a commitment. <laughs> kind yeah, of a commitment. It, yeah, it's a commitment, and it's in a, uh, an extension of a program um, that we're already um, have taken on, which we've contracted out. We're actually allowing someone to rent the room, mm -hmm. um, the spirit program, mm -hmm. uh, and they have uh, exercise classes for uh, people with disabilities. Those programs are well attended. Uh, residents have been asking for more. That's so, great. That's yeah, all I need to know. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask one follow-up? Yeah. Um, how do you decide, is there particular qualifications to get into the program? Like, how do you evaluate disability? Well, we haven't put out the RFP yet or come up with the uh, parameters for that. But for the SPIRIT program, um, uh, the actual organization has the, uh, the qualifications as long as you have a, you know, a disability and you can participate in the program. Generally, the folks kind of self-select for the group. Yeah. And that, that's a very tight community, so, and they communicate. Uh, with each other, so once uh, word gets out that we're having a particular type of program, and they usually disseminate information and register. I was, just, I was asked by somebody with a um, psychological disability as opposed to a physical disability whether they could participate. I understand. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, got to apologize for being late. Um, Maybe you've already discussed some of these questions. Um, going back to uh, page six, regarding the community grants emergency assistance, mm -hmm. uh, last year you proposed 179,000 and change, and this year it's 125,000. Is there, did we redirect money or are you anticipating less need? I think that these are the, kind of some carryover of some other programs. I'll have to get you the actual list of, of what it all entails. Okay. So I'll get that to you. And then on the partnership program, mm -hmm. 
Uh, last year we adopted 50,000. This year it seems, and this is tiny print, that we are proposing 100,000. Right. Um, is that to be, di how do you, bless you, how do you anticipate that being divided? Is it 50, 50, 60, 40? I think, I mean, it's usually done um, more by on a request for proposals basis. So it it's really depends on what people ask for and, and how it meets the various needs that are laid out. Okay. And so far, we only have received qualified uh, responses for one? For one of the, one of the items, yeah. Okay. All right. And then getting to the stormwater public works, did we discuss the amount uh, that you are proposing for stormwater storm fee? That'll be part of the reconciliation discussion. Okay. All right. All right. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Kovar. Thank you. I think, uh, thanks for the presentation. Sure. I think we uh, exchanged uh, emails about this, but I wanted to see if you could uh, explore a little bit at this point. So on the position in the recreation department, the youth coordinator, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's the precise term, but that that position and that is sort of absorbed up from what had been the lifelong Tacoma. And so uh, I think the question that I'm interested in is to what extent either through that or in some other way we can basically discharge some of the duties that the lifelong Tacoma, I know that was only a half-time mm -hmm. position previously, mm -hmm. but right. I know in speaking, for example, to the people with the village of Tacoma Park, they do a lot of work related to that, but there are certain things in the referral area in particular that mm -hmm. uh, they have found more difficult to, to do. So I, well, can certainly you talk a little bit about that? Sure. I think that the uh, youth outreach person probably isn't the right person for that. Um, because we really, that one really is focused on, on mm -hmm. outreach to youth. Right. Um, within the recreation department, uh, we do have a senior coordinator for some of the activities, and she's picked up a, a number of the connections. Um, I know the deputy city manager has been working with the various, um, what is the group, the group it's of the, groups? We call it the Tacoma Park Providers Council. The Providers Council. Uh, on, on trying to share information. We've also seen a great uptick even within um, some of our other departments of, of people helping out in, I think, the way that you are interested in. I don't have a particular name that says it needs to go there. Um, still talking about that. So that there's some, some, if people really are unsure where's the right place to call, but we intend to be able to help. I mean, I guess the one thing I would say is, and, and it's not important to me, it may be important to Jason as to whether or not he does do this, but because uh, he has a lot of other things on his plate, but um, I think it would be really helpful mm -hmm. if we could commit to uh, keeping track of the data so that halfway through the fiscal year we can look and see, oh, um, it's been working out okay with two or three people or some things are not uh, able to be uh, referred properly for whatever set of reasons are falling through the cracks, mm -hmm. and then we would know if we're in need of looking at it differently. So I think that would be that would be helpful. Okay. Um, I had a couple of other issues that mm -hmm. probably fall outside of needing to be added in reconciliation, but I just wanted to ask you about them. And again, we might have had email exchange on this. A lot of people um, have been contacting me recently now that the weather's getting warmer and all these insects are coming around about mosquito control, and in particular mm -hmm. with the Zika virus and, right. you know, whatever the next uh, illness of that kind would be. And, you know, I've talked previously a lot about how I think in code enforcement should focus more on education. This strikes me as a really <laughs> great area for yeah. that, though, because there's a lot of pretty sure. simple things that a lot of folks may not necessarily be aware of that can help significantly reduce the incidence of that. So if we were going to mount a little bit of an educational campaign on that to coincide with the period in the summer when the insects are worse. Mm -hmm. Can we do that out of what we have existing? Sure. And is that something, I know the county has a lot of responsibility as well, and you, you guys right. have done uh, conference calls with them in last year and so on, but, but I think it would be helpful to find a way out of the existing money well, to do certainly that. Certainly this past year, um, our emergency manager um, took the lead on that. 
um, and um, participated with the county on a number of um, anti-Zika things and sharing um, educational information. Our neighborhood services team will, you know, is out um, around and they look at for property code violations, which often are places where water can collect, and that can be one of those things that they can um, cite if they have to, but certainly educate and say, no, you want to not have this little kid's swimming pool filled up with water for three weeks, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think um, we take it very seriously, especially um, I've, I've been receiving alerts that, you know, it's been the warmest April yep. ever, or that kind of thing, yep. that, we, that Zika could be more of a problem in the coming year. We, want to, we do want to take it seriously. Yeah, and even if there was just a, a best practices thing, I'd be happy just to send that to the email list. In, sure, in, and we, in we put that area. out last we, year, yeah. um, but we can highlight it again and, and have a link on okay. the website for you. That sounds good. Two other quick things. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. A number of people in the community raised questions about the spraying and how we could control invasive weeds differently. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we have money set aside. Right. We've been using it in ways that maybe some of us thought weren't the best way to control that. We still have to control it. So could you just mind talking sure. a little bit? Because that fits within I public works, I guess, right? I think we had like $15,000 right? for that. Um, and the, um, the funds, the bulk of the funds actually go to manual labor. And so if we have to do more manual labor, mm -hmm. you know, we wouldn't be saving money on that line item. And, and it may cost a little bit more. Um, I think it's going to be a, a policy discussion with the Committee on the Environment. Is that is that correct? Yeah, the Committee on the Environment said um, they would look into whether or not they could take it up, and if they couldn't, then one of the things we discussed as a council when this became an issue was um, if the Committee on the Environment couldn't do it, now that we have our urban forest manager on board, maybe having a task force that looked at that and other issues. Because okay. the request had come in, if I'm not mistaken, um, that the way that we do um, the invasive species management in these four or five wooded areas actually came in through people requesting that we take better uh, care of the trees. Right. Um, so instead of just saying, okay, we're not going to do this anymore, <laughs> um, to actually have our new urban forest manager take a look at the current policy, work with the Committee on the Environment, and get back to Council. But even in the meantime, um, he's the one who's making the decision if we're going to be doing anything at all, even before yeah. we have those discussions. Yeah. Okay. I had a handful of other questions, but I don't want to. Uh, I'm happy to stop for a minute and let other people no, ask. Okay. Um, I think they're quick. Okay. Um, I, I do appreciate the therapeutic program, by the way. I think that's a great idea. So, so thanks for that. Um, you mentioned in the police section a focus on, uh, for want of a better term, going back to people who have regrettably been the victims That's right. of crime. Can you just explain a little bit more, amplify what, what that would involve? Sure. I, well, I think that there's actually a tracking system that, that can help us um, register when an investigator has uh, spoken to somebody and then is able to um, periodically have that pop up again to make sure that they keep the person apprised until, until there's resolution of the case. But is that something that will be enhanced a little bit in, in the Yes, it'll be put into place. It's Right okay. now it's been a little bit more on the responsibility of the individual officers as opposed to a more systematic approach. Okay. So in other words, they could see which incidents were kind of due for a, that's right. a, a check in. Is that kind okay. of how? Kind of, is that, that's the right way to characterize it, right? We're looking at putting in a uh, case management system for CID, which we don't have right now, right. which would allow the investigators to put all of their cases into the system. And we can track, because there was some discussion before about um, getting back to people on follow-ups with investigations. And we want to we want to increase those efforts so that um, there's no complaints with follow-ups and, and keeping people appraised of uh, what's going on with their investigation. Okay. And then somebody else can also look at that record to see, answer a question if that officer is not there. Yeah. Right, that's very important. Okay, Co just Council uh, Member Kovar, can yeah, I just ahead. follow up yeah, on that of question? Yeah. So we're talking about in terms of victim notifications, we're talking about instances where there hasn't been an arrest made and it's a pending investigation, right? Yes, if there's uh, something that's been assigned to criminal investigations, uh, like a robbery or any of the major cases, just to keep people appraised of what's going on and just uh, making sure that everyone's notified and that we make a couple notifications and that there's no issues with uh, people being updated on stuff because we want to increase the communication basically. 
And then once an arrest is made, who handles those communications, the, the prosecutor and that office moving forward? Well, we also our victim witness coordinator, she coordinates with them, uh, sometimes gets them rides to court, you know, and goes with them through the whole process of court. And she's also involved in that. And, and in the, the case management system that we, that we want to implement, uh, we can put everything in there. We can put case notes. Uh, it also, without having to go up to the state attorney's office and take our whole case file, we can actually give them a link to the system and they can go in there and they can look at everything in there. We can, we can make it specific to certain things we want them to look at. If they want to know about certain, if they want to look at the, uh, the full case, if they want to look at just part of the case. So it's just tracking it and, and just enhancing our ability to uh, do fo more follow-up. Thanks. Thank you. One last thing, and I've talked about this a lot, and you can just give me your reaction, which is the idea of having a notice requirement of, say, 48 hours or whatever would make sense for street repairs and things like that, which mm -hmm. would mainly fall within uh, public works, I think. And you know, I'm not talking about emergency situations, obviously, but, but planned situations. So is that something where money would have to be set aside in I don't order think, to do that? I don't is think that a policy question for the council, or is it just a thing we can do? It's certainly something that I'm working on. It can easily be a policy question in your, in, for the council. Um, it is, um, I don't think any money is, needs to be allocated for it. Um, I think that the area where we've had the most difficulty has to do with utilities and with right. SHA, um, not so much our own staff. Um, but. Um, you know, that's still one of those, those are, that's a tough one to, to deal with. And so we've been trying to figure out the best way that we can do internally. I really appreciate um, Council Member Smith's uh, work with the group on utilities and SHA. And even, you know, the list that you provided, uh, I heard one of our folks from Public Works said that it was, it was awesome. It was definitely uh, very useful. So. Yeah, and, and I'm certainly not saying that we should be responsible for SHA or WSSC or PEPCO okay. or whatever. I mean, obviously, we want to work closely with them and urge right. them or through our legislative, uh, uh, you know, representatives to, right. at the state level to try to address that. But in addition, when we are doing something ourselves or mm -hmm. one of our contractors, mm -hmm. that's the situation I'm talking about. So. We're trying to do that, okay. but yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Actually, can I just follow up while we're on that one? Because one of the things we talked about during our council priority sessions was also exploring um, new ways to notify right. people. And so I'm not thinking that and needs to be a budget issue no, right now, yeah, it's but not a budget I just item, wanted to piggyback on what council member That's right. I think um, there's, I think saying. there's some real opportunities for, for figuring out some better ways to get information out to folks who, you know, for whatever reason, aren't following us on Twitter or something. You know, we, we need to have a, a more systematic way. You can't, you're not following us on Twitter. <laughs> Is that Council Member are you done? Good. Council Member Mail? Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, so a few questions, uh, just sort of for the city manager overall. Mm -hmm. What's the reason to budget based on the adopted 17 or adopted previous year as opposed to the actual or the estimated? So we, we base most of the numbers in here on not what we expect to spend and the change in 18 versus what we expect to spend in 17, but we base it on what we adopted in 17. It depends on the actual category. Well, so like in most of the departmental so that all of them say division expenditures are expected to be, this is uh, police, um, $47,000 less, a decrease of 1.3% compared to budgeted oh. expenditures. Yeah. So that kind of language. Right. It's, it's more standard budget prep language than it is, I think, useful. But we, we have two different parts. We have one which says, what's the explanation between what was adopted and what we're adopting, mm -hmm. and or and what actually we're expecting, and then the next is what we're looking to adopt the next time. Um, sometimes that can be very helpful to, to find out um, what was the what was the reason. This is trying to answer your questions in advance. If you're looking at these columns of numbers and wondering, gee, we said we were going to spend you know twenty thousand for this, and we only spent five thousand, and you would want to know, well, well, what was the reason? And then maybe it's been a staff vacancy or something, but it's a way to provide that explanation. It isn't how we budget, though. How we budget is what we think 
is the right number for the, for the next fiscal year. And so that's, sometimes it goes on experience. Um, on other ones, um, it goes on getting cost uh, estimates from suppliers and that kind of thing. So it really depends on the, on the category. Okay. Um, I, I have three uh, areas where I had questions based mm -hmm. on sort of those numbers mm -hmm. uh, being the flag. Yeah. And I'll give you the three examples and then whatever response makes sense. Okay. Um, the first is that in police investigations, that was one of the few places where it had a, a big number in terms of salary and staff increase, the 7.8% mm -hmm. over budgeted 17. Um, the second was in the office of the chief, it was a 17. So most you talk about a 2% increase, sort mm -hmm. of average. Right. 17% um, increase in the office of the chief. And that was one of the also rare places where the 17 expected expenditure is greater, significantly mm -hmm. greater than, mm -hmm. the, than the budgeted mm -hmm. uh, 17 expenditure. Uh, most of that in the office of the, as opposed to the criminal investigations, most of the office of the chief number is in services and charges, 45,000. Right. And then in the um, general uh, government budget, in the HR department is the other significant increase, and that's there's about sixty thousand dollars. It's a small department. Mm -hmm. The only explanation is we're hiring an intern, so we're not paying an intern sixty thousand dollars. So if we can just provide either here or afterwards. Sure, I think it's also noted that you know we will be doing the compensation study, so we have a, a amount for that. Um, and but it's, un, it's under it's under personnel. Go ahead. It case. may also be for our police chief search. Um, but anyway. Right. Um, Good evening. We are, we've budgeted $50,000 for the compensation study. So that's a huge mm -hmm. chunk there. And then part of that is also for interns and for just the general increase in salaries. Okay. How many interns? Right now we have two. Um, they are part-time. So we budget for 40 hours and then kind of work their schedule for the 40 hours. Okay. Uh, and the other, the police-related ones? Um, I can ask Captain Bowers. Um, I know that with um, a lot of times when it's a difference in the lines in the police department, it can be uh, even the transfer of one position from one division to another division and the associated personnel benefit costs can make a big difference, and so we go through that. Generally, with the Office of Chief, there's often a lot of expenses for uniforms and other kind of um, one-time things for oncoming officers, but I'm not sure if that's the explanation here. In, in the Office Bowers? of the Chief? Yeah. Yeah, in the Office of the Chief's budget, uh, most of these numbers have to do with what we're projecting for incoming staff, um, and if you're referring to the you're referring to the subtotal for staffing for, for personnel costs. Um, a lot of that looks like it's in fringe benefits. So that would have been something that goes up based on the number of staff that's in there and the compensation that's negotiated for them. Um, that, that's the, a big chunk of that money, which is goes from 109 to 138. So that's where a big hunk of that is. And it has to do with the benefits packages that the people in that division receive. Okay. They actually, for the Office of the Chief, the sort of specific one was um, the, the adopted services and charges go from 170 to 211. So yeah, and the reflection of that is uh, in the previous budget year, we had an additional sum of money of the 40,000. Uh, mm -hmm. That was for the, the uh, excuse me, starting for a second, the study on police practices. Mm -hmm. and, and in last year's, the previous budget, it didn't reflect appropriately. And so now it reflects appropriately along with uh, monies for the taser contract, uh, which saw a small increase uh, for the additional cameras we've added for the interview rooms and some additional body cameras for other staff, which caused that to go up. Okay. And then the criminal investigations, so that was, that was personnel related? Yes, sir. Uh, any thoughts on that one? Yeah. One second. Most of those personnel costs are, are all directly related to their fringe benefits and salary, which are all negotiated in their projected contract changes. Mm -hmm. So that's why those numbers would have gone up. And we can give you the actual kind okay. of almost by person costs. Yeah. Okay. That's, I just note yeah. that those are th three places mm -hmm. to stand out. Thank you. Sure. Um, you might stay just for a second. Okay. Uh, uh, I thought we had a conversation at some point about potentially moving to two-year parking permits. 
Did that just not go anywhere? Or do we, if we yeah, ever we talked didn't, about I think moving? we just didn't get there. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I blanked out on that. It's not a budget issue, oh, but it just came up. Residential parking permits? Yeah. yeah. We offer know. residential parking permits in two flavors, uh, right. the one-year variety and the two-year permit as well. Okay, right. is, there a, uh, is there a breakdown of how many people choose one flavor versus the other? I could get it for you. I don't have it off the top of my head. I can okay. ask Ms. White to pull it in the morning. She could she get it. I think, most, no rush, I think most people do the two-year. Yeah, most people collect the two-year, sorry. Yeah. I'm on that, someone asked me this. Um, do you have to go in in person to get No, you your, do not have to go in in person. You can mail it in? You, we have a form online that you can mail in along with the uh, appropriate check or money order and okay. uh, forms, and we'll take care of it. And you, can you use a credit card or? Credit cards have to go through the finance office. We don't have the ability to accept credit okay. cards. Okay. But we are looking at, at ways when we, as we're going through our parking study about a different way of accommodating yeah. all of these things. Okay. Have a great, thanks. Thank okay, you. And last question uh, for you, um, mm -hmm. where the city manager. Uh, we, we've moved now where you call 911 and 911 goes to the county, right? Yes, And then sir. the county transfers to our dispatch. Is there any, I mean, why do we do that? Why don't we have the county run dispatch? Just, it's just a sort of basic question, but, but that's, that's. So the reason we have our own communication, it's part of our uh, public safety full service police system. Um, we have our own communication center because it is a point of contact, a direct point of contact for our residents to call. Uh, when you call ECC, you know, you're, you're not talking about somebody who necessarily knows the streets or how many officers we have or what conditions are ongoing here in the city as they can be different from what's going on in the county. So when you call, when you call 911, the entire purpose of that is we have one to two dispatch staff working at a time. And in a critical incident, when somebody calls in, if they call in the 270-1100 number, which is a non-emergency number, that, that, that reaches our capacity, and we don't have a second person necessarily to answer that phone. If everybody called the number at the same time the dispatcher was on on an emergency call, she may not be able to get to the next call, and then you would be stuck ringing, and no one would pick up. When you call 911, it gets transferred down to us. If another person calls 911 and it's ringing, the county will pick that call up for us, and they will then look in the CAD system as we share a CAD system, and they'll go, oh, they're already on a critical incident, and they will add the information that the next caller has. It, it expands our ability to answer phone calls in a, in a convenient and timely fashion during a crisis. So they're, uh, they're sort of backup, right? They, they are right. backup, yeah. yes. Um, and then do the, do the dispatch folks like participate in your staff meetings? Are they integrated in the department, at least to some extent, or are they pretty separate from what you do? We try to integrate them as much as we can. Uh, the dispatch supervisor in years past has always attended the CompStat meetings uh, and therefore has some input into what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, Right now, uh, the current uh, supervisor, Danielle Gallup, she's been with the city, I'm going to say about 18 years. She's extraordinarily well-versed in the city and everything that goes on. Uh, while we do occasionally experience some turnover in dispatch, we currently have two vacancies. Uh, the, gen the staff is generally stays for five to six years. Uh, the staff we have now, uh, the most junior person has been here for four years, three years. And so we, they have a good understanding of the city, the officers, the residents, and, and what our residents are looking for when they call. Um, you get more personalized service from our dispatch. If you called county ECC, some things they are not going to send a police officer out for. They will filter and screen calls at the desk. Our, our communication center does not filter or screen calls. They're directed to take the information and dispatch a police officer. If they have any questions or the caller has a question, they can connect that person to the supervisor that's on duty at that time to helpfully resolve it. What we don't want to have is somebody call in with, a, with an issue and that call get filtered or screened, and then a police officer never have an opportunity to go and resolve the situation. And so for us, it's about being able to send officers out to give that extra service. It's all about public safety for us, and necessarily from ECC, you won't get that same level of public safety and the same level of concern for what's going on. 18 years is a lot of dispatch calls. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, You're Captain Bowers. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, it would be great to get a presentation from the, or not a, 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 an update from the Folk Festival folks at some point in the after budget process. Um, <coughs> uh, and then the other question I had was um, uh, for Public Works. The budget lists multifamily energy projects jumping from six to 10 and up from the previous year. Multi, mm -hmm. so, that, so I'm just curious what those are and whether there's a budget cost associated with that. I didn't yeah. see it necessarily in the, in the, uh, in the budget. I'm not sure which figures you're referring to, so I'll just speak in general. We are seeking uh, grant funding through MEA for uh, multifamily programs, and we've increased the city's allocation towards multifamily programs. We started it um, last year, and it's been very popular. 
Um, and initially, uh, you know, not taking too much time, but initially we were working on a more tenant-driven uh, energy efficiency measures. We did a program uh, with uh, uh, AE um, mm -hmm. that was grant funded uh, and got very little traction, uh, but we've been finding that we're able to accomplish uh, far greater energy reductions by working with the um, managers and the overall programs. Mm -hmm. And so um, we had a program this past year where we uh, allocated two or previous where we allocated two grants to two buildings, and, and so we want to increase that because we our, um, our receipt of applications far exceeded our funding. So right now the budget for it is is based on our sort of environment budget and you're shifting more money into it, but the grant funding is not built into the budget, but if you were successful in yep. the yep. MEA budget, then we do a budget That's amendment right. through right. the year. Right, yeah. Okay. yeah. We keep pushing yeah. for those. Great. Mm -hmm. And is that, anyway, I'm just this could mm -hmm. be followed up for afterwards, but um, if the number that's in there is contingent on that grant funding or if it's just that's what we'll be able to do with the city funds and then grant funding will expand it more greatly, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. I think that's what we think um, the, the request level will get us a little bit further into. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't satisfy everybody, but it'll, um, you know, we think we'll have at least that many applications, if not more. So we're just trying to get a bigger and bigger bite of it each time. <laughs> And it's kind of a, a gut feel from the sustainability manager and, you know, what kind of risk request she's receiving and what, what kind of information she's got from the okay. community. Mm -hmm. And then I just sort of last question since you're there, and I just remembered that I wanted to ask it. Um, the Tacoma Branch uh, project, that's $100,000 for the planning and design study. That's yep. not for the actual restoration right. work. Right. Um, do you have any sense? 100000 next year or so? Is that what uh, well, uh, we're thinking that project is a half a million dollar project okay. uh, at this point, and we're, we've been for years actively seeking funding and just have not been able to um, get a hold on it. Uh, some of it is because the focus of the national organizations that fund this kind of thing shifts from one to the other. The other is that it's kind of a unique um, stream restoration program due to, to some of the conditions there. Uh, but um, it's clear to us that we're going to have to have a full-blown design to sort of show uh, what the restoration will be and what the impacts will be in order to get grant funding to do it. So, and, and that's in, that's county land, or who owns the land? That it's no, in? it's our. Uh, uh, well, that's I step back. It's Sligo Mill Poplar Mill. We have the manage uh, that was purchased with program open space funding, mm -hmm. and now uh, um, so the county bought it with the agreement that we would be the manager of that facility. So they allocate no funds towards management. Okay. Everything that takes place in that open space is, is managed by the city. So the $100,000 is just a sort of a ballpark. It might be more or less. But. Uh, we are, have been working. We have a 30% uh, de design development that we've worked up to now. So mm -hmm. it's a pretty hard number for what it'll take to finish that to 100% design. Do the projects, um, I can't remember the name of the other Ward uh, 3 stream that you guys did a little couple years ago. but the A Ward 3 stream. Um, it's behind the cool, funky, black, square house, modern house. Oh, so, Circle Woods. Circle Woods, thank you. <laughs> um, as you start doing these projects, does it get easier? Can you, like, start finding cost savings in terms of design-related issues? They are so such unique features in and of themselves, um, and they have different kind of conditions mm -hmm. um, that, uh, uh, to some degree, um, there is some uh, applicability, you mm -hmm. know, across projects. But uh, for the most part, they're, they're pretty focused on the site conditions there. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other questions before we move on to reconciliation? Nope. All right. Then thank you for the presentation tonight. So I guess in terms of just thinking about, I sent everyone an email thinking about how we would um, move proceed this week. So we have tonight, and what I ask is that um, tonight we try and get a pretty comprehensive um, reconciliation list. I thought what we could do is that the person who put an item on the list could speak to and remind us all why <laughs> it's on the list. Um, we could ask questions, ask questions of the staff, um, and do follow up. Uh, we don't, I didn't think we need, necessarily needed to um, debate each of these items this evening, um, but rather um, get information, address any questions, and then on Wednesday night, so that each of us had a couple of days to reflect upon the information or receive new information, and then Wednesday night we would go down the list again and vote on the final reconciliation in time for the budget. So, yes, Councilmember Smith. 
Can we add additional items to the reconciliation? Tonight, yeah. Tonight. Oh, okay. yeah, cool. absolutely. All right, thank you. Mayor, uh, would it be all right if I went ahead and just identified the staff items on here first before? Yes, and actually, one other thing before I forget it, because I'm going to forget saying it, is that um, Council Member Mal had raised the idea of having a policy statement mm -hmm. on our budget this year, and I've discussed this with the city manager um, and our finance director, and we will have a, and actually our city clerk came up with the idea of mm -hmm. having a, um, basically a resolution that would um, put out different uh, policy objectives, such as, and I'm just making up this number because I can't remember what we actually said, that, you know, something like we wanted to spend X percent of the affordable housing reserve. Um, right. And we thought this was an excellent idea given that there will be elections next year, and we want to make sure that all of our um, discussions and intent for this budget um, is documented. So then what year. would happen is in the budget uh, in the budget ordinance there would be kind of a reference to this associated resolution. Okay. So all right, so now I'll turn it over to the city manager and you can start. Okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, go down on a, a couple of items. Um, I mentioned them while we were going through. Um, but one I didn't, I did send out an email um, earlier about the cost of issuance of the bonds. Um, this is something that's referenced in the budget document, but we had just learned about it at the time we printed the budget document. Um, and then we had a, a conversation with Charles Day of the Maryland program last Thursday. Um, and he went through um, just the processes for us to apply for the uh, $2 million bond and the $7 million bond. Um, the $2 million bond has a $50,000 cost of issuance. The $7 million bond has a $175,000 cost of issuance. There are three ways that we can pay those funds. We can pay them up front and basically make them part of the reconciliation uh, budget. We can um, finance them just and pay the interest on that extra money for the duration of the, of the term of the bond or we can uh, take that money from the proceeds of the bond. My personal recommendation is to take it from the proceeds of the bond, um, but if you feel generous and you want to take it out of the reconciliation budget, that's fine with me too. I would not recommend financing it because that just adds additional interest onto the, onto the bond. Can you give us those numbers one more time, please? Sure, for the $2 million bond, it's 50,000. And for the seven million dollar bond, it's 175,000. To me, the 50,000 isn't such a big issue, but the 175,000 is a, is a good amount of money. Uh, can we ask a question? Then? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Uh, you said that uh, that you would recommend against adding it on to the proceeds. Uh, I don't mind taking it from the proceeds. I don't want it to be added on so you have a $7,175,000 bond with an increased amount of interest right. paid. Either way you do it, you're going to be paying interest on that amount. If you take it from the proceeds, it comes off the top up but front. It's, but it's still, you're going to be paying interest on it because you're paying interest on the whole bond. Right, you're just not getting as much other bond money. Right. That's right. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, the, um, let me go down. The, I had mentioned before the health insurance. Um, so we did get uh, a quote in that was lower than the amount that we had put in the budget for health insurance. The amount comes up to somewhere about $83,000 of savings. So you have 80000 here, and then you have some for the folks who are paid out of the speed camera and stormwater uh, further down in the chart. The, um, the, question for, uh, by Councilmember Mail about the police chief salary. We do have, um, uh, we did assume a three-month vacancy in the next, next fiscal year, and somewhere between seven to $10,000 a month thereafter, if there was a longer vacancy, would be a, would be, um, a savings. On the contribution to the ERR uh, related to the street sweeper, my strong preference is to instead of reducing the contribution to the ERR by $100,000 from the $800,000, my preference is to reduce it by $80,000 to $720,000 and um, then put the street sweeper in the ERR. In future years, I would like those, uh, the contribution for that street sweeper, which is five years out, 
to come out of stormwater funds, but that would be something that we would discuss in a future budget. The, um, the workers' compensation reduction that I announced this evening is, a, is an, uh, included here for $150,000. The um, additional amount of the county police rebate is $26,500, and those are the items that I did change um, on the, the reconciliation this afternoon. And do we have money on the reconciliation list to hire cons uh, consultant to find a police chief or uh, that was built into the um, HR budget okay okay so any questions um, on the staff items on the reconciliations councilmember Siemens did you have a question oh, that no, that was okay Councilmember Smith, did you have a question? Yes, or do you want I would to? like to add something. Okay, okay. let hold that thought for okay. one second. I just want to make sure on Councilmember Mal, yeah. So just to, on the street sweeper, uh, the two items mm -hmm. that are on here, mm -hmm. there's no increase somewhere else in the budget. It's just a choice between a negative 100,000 or negative 80,000. That's right. I don't see that um, a five year out stormwater I think makes a difference that much in the stormwater fee. And since we're debating the stormwater fee and going to find out more information next yeah. year, it just didn't seem okay. like I could calculate okay. that. Okay. It's a little bit complicated. I just wanted to <laughs> yeah. clarify. All right, Councilmember Siemens does have a question. Yeah, regarding yes. the street sweeper, is that yes. a, uh, a change in the formula that you came up with that amount, or is it uh, you know, new information, or is it just? It, basically, the street sweeper was included the in the <laughs> CIP for the stormwater uh, for the stormwater budget for five years out. When you look at the CIP and you see that there's no other um, expenses in that five-year um, out period for other stormwater activities, and it's only buying a $260,000 street sweeper, I think that's unrealistic. I think we will want to be doing other things five years out rather than just buy a street sweeper. Um, the, since it's five years out and it, I was taking $50,000 about a year to get there, um, since there was about 30,000 that I'd kind of overguessed for the $700,000 ERR recommendation because when I figured out for a 10-year period it was about $670,000 a year for the ERR so I took 30 from that and then I took an additional 20,000 figuring that at least we needed to contribute 50,000 this year so that over the next 5 years we'd about pay for the street sweeper Got that. Got that. <laughs> I'm happy to. I'm happy to write it out for you. But I, I think it'll be very helpful before next week if you uh, if you move those shells around a little slower. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. Thank you. I think it actually makes sense, but it's a little hard to describe just orally. On one end of it, it makes sense. That's your end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions on the staff items that are on the reconciliation list? No. All right, so then we're going to turn to Council Member Smith, who would like to add something. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a number of us asked uh, Mr. Dan Weber for information regarding the police department, and uh, he was uh, very helpful in providing an email regarding accreditation. This is something, as a council, we have uh, discussed uh, on a number of occasions, and uh, I will be the first to admit that I did not think it was um, something that we should pursue. But I think currently that uh, we should reevaluate whether or not accreditation is the right policy for our police department. And uh, according to Mr. Dan Weber's email, it's going to cost around uh, $11,400, but that does not include travel expenses. Uh, so I would like to propose that uh, we consider $15,000 uh, for the reconciliation budget so that we can uh, make sure that our department is accredited. And uh, according to Mr. Dan Weber, most, a number of the municipalities that do uh, have policing in Montgomery County, uh, their departments are accredited. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. 
Any questions oh. on the accreditation? Oh, did, Mr. Jamway, did you want to say? I just yeah. think it's uh, important to note also that in addition to the direct costs for uh, the accreditation, um, we also think that there could be some staffing applications as well. Um, and I don't know <coughs> exactly what those implications would be. And, and if I mm -hmm. can add, um, I would suggest that Mr. Harding, uh, Ron Hardy, uh, should be considered to take on the um, accreditation uh, piece of the job. He certainly would take the lead. There's usually a, a lot of additional kind of administrative work, and so we would we'd let you know about that. Mayor, since this issue is not so intuitive for the public that may be watching, mm -hmm. it may be helpful for the assistant city manager or deputy city manager to provide some background on what, on what Council Member Smith is talking about. Mm -hmm. So Kalia is the accreditation agency, the national, international actually, I think, accredited, accreditation agency for um, public safety uh, departments, police departments primarily. Um, they provide uh, public safety agencies with an opportunity to voluntarily demonstrate that they meet an established set of criteria standards um, that uh, focus on things like uh, written policy directives, uh, training, um, all sorts of things. Um, and uh, and there uh, basically are benchmarks that are set on an annual basis. And um, cyclically, every couple of years, um, the agency actually has someone come to the municipality seeking accreditation or reaccreditation or to maintain their accreditation to ensure that um, all the documentation and procedures and policies are in the right place. Very recently, they actually moved to um, an online system, um, so it makes it a little bit easier to share um, updates regularly with the accreditation agency. Um, I don't know if any of the, the captains have anything to add to that. Good evening again. So uh, accreditation pretty much is what the deputy city manager explained. Um, We've had some experience in the past with accreditation, as Council Member Siemens is aware. We've been accredited and not accredited and accredited several times. Uh, it is extraordinarily labor intensive. Um, and the reason that one of the, the reasons we dropped out of it under Chief Ricucci had to do with the amount of staff time was necessary to, to maintain our accreditation files. At that time, we had a half time accreditation manager, and the system had kind of gotten neglected for a while. And when they went back to read, look through the files, they, they said it's going to take us several years to fix all of the files. And if we, we were interested in being reaccredited again, um, I would recommend that we had a full-time staff person that did nothing but accreditation. Mr. Hardy already is the emergency preparedness manager for the city. In addition, he does policy and planning for the police department. On top of that, to add accreditation, he just wouldn't have enough hours in the day to be able to complete all of those tasks. So we would, we would definitely have to have a full-time place. Uh, most of the other municipalities that have accreditation have a full-time person doing accreditation, whether it's a civilian employee or a sworn staff member. Uh, they, they have somebody that does that constantly. Um, so there is that consideration. And then to get through the process, you know, the application and all the things that uh, the deputy city manager provided information on, it could take us up to two years to get to that point where they did their on-site assessment and we were able to complete that process. Do we know what neighboring jurisdictions or municipalities have accredited police departments? Uh, I'll let the uh, city manager. Yes. Um, I'm pulling up the email that uh, Council Member Smith was referring to earlier, uh, the ones that I included in there, and there's a comprehensive list on the Kalia website, but uh, they include Gaithersburg, Rockville, Hyattsville, Greenbelt, Hagerstown, and Montgomery County is also accredited. Yeah. You have a question? Yes, I, I'm go Captain Bowers. I thank you because what you just said uh, was consistent with my recollection of what Chief Ricucci and and he uh, him he and uh, Chief Goldberg had said about the whole matter. Uh, in other words, they were not in favor of it to the extent that it was going to cost them a per you know uh, a person that would otherwise have other duties. Uh, my concern, and I, this is probably more of a, a rhetorical state, statement, is that I'm not sh sure whether accreditation has a tangible effect on the safety uh, and protectiveness of our residents, which is really the bottom line from what we want from our police department. I'm not sure, and I, so this is an open question, really. 
as to whether it increases transparency, which is of paramount importance to all of us these days. Um, and it, because it just, it could be that it's a lot of make work just to be able to sort of hang a plaque on the wall, or it may be that it will actually help in the governance of, of our police and, and the transparency and, and, all, and things like that. And that's something in general, I guess, when we don't even have a police chief now and we're going to be hiring them, that it would seem to make a lot of sense to factor that into the interviewing process as to whether or not we want to go in that direction. Right. Mayor, I think it's, mm -hmm. I appreciated Councilmember Smith putting this on the mm -hmm. agenda. There may, on the reconciliation list, there may be additional funds we might want to suggest, um, but that would be something we could bring back on Wednesday. Sure. Yeah. Now that we have Captain Bowers here, I just wanted to see if Councilmember Siemens, did you want to ask Captain Bowers a question before you sat? No, you may sit down. Okay. <laughs> but I did. Uh, do I have the floor now? Yes. You Thank you. Um, as many in the room already know, I have long supported uh, accreditation and advocated for accreditation of the Tacoma Park Police. Um, but uh, Many of you also know that I, uh, I had heart surgery in 2014, and I did go to an accredited hospital and felt there was a benefit to that. <laughs> um, but I think that uh, clearly uh, there are uh, questions that need to be answered before uh, this council should approve uh, funds and uh, give direction that the policy is that we become accredited. Uh, so I would support uh, uh, Council members Smith's um, proposal, but would also ask that we uh, ask Kalia uh, to come and talk with the council and, and answer the questions about whether it is a benefit and what those benefits are. And um, if if we're not accredited and it's going to take us a long time to get our stuff into order to be accredited, it raises the question to me of, uh, gee, are we not doing some things we should be doing? And if it's just do paperwork, then is there a value to doing that paperwork? Is there, and if there's no value other than making Kalia happy, uh, then maybe they're going down the wrong path. Uh, but if we, uh, if there is a benefit to that in uh, handling court cases, insurance cases, uh, doing our, our work in a uh, proper and professional manner, then uh, why aren't we doing it now? And again, rhetorical, I think we need more information. Mm -hmm. Right. And just as a reminder, we don't have to necessarily debate each of these tonight, but just to kind of get all the questions on the table while all the staff is here. And, oh, that won't uh, be I, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Smith. Mayor, I just want to piggyback on what Council Member Siemens said and ask staff to mm -hmm. have representatives from uh, Montgomery County, Gaither, Gaithersburg, and Rockville's police department come and talk to us about the value of being accredited. So, okay. thank you. Councilman McCover. I'm not debating it, just making two <laughs> observations. Um, on the pro side would be, I, I think sometimes it can help get grants if you have that. And on the other side, um, I'm not sure whether I would want to do this when we're in the middle of hiring a police chief, since the new police chief should maybe be part of the decision about whether to do it. So uh, not debating, just saying. Okay. Great. Any other questions for staff before we have to vote on this item on Wednesday evening? All right. Um, we'll move on then. Um, I'm going to ask the city manager actually to speak to a couple of items, I think, okay. um, that are somewhat related. Um, or to clarify for us. There are three items. There's the increase in design construction of the atrium floor that mm -hmm. Councilmember Siemens put on, right. the decrease in the third floor office improvements, mm -hmm. and the decrease in the police department detailed design that Councilmember Smith put on. I think all three of those are somewhat related. Well, there's, the, there's at least two are. Okay. <laughs> um, the um, police department detailed design um, would include the detailed design for filling in the atrium floor. Um, and um, the, I don't, we have not yet gotten a ballpark figure what the cost of just the atrium floor portion would be. There seems to be 
no hesitation about moving forward with that portion of the project. We think it's advantageous. Um, but I guess one of the things that I was thinking, so, so there's that. Then there's also the issue of the fact that with the library construction coming up, we've been having a lot of discussions about how do we make better use of our building here during that transition time for different kinds of services, where, the, where some of the books go, where some of the extra computers go, where programming takes place, where staff goes, that kind of thing. And one of the things we had talked about is that having that floor filled in could help us um, address some of those things as well during the transition time. So not having firm figures on the atrium floor portion, um, and I don't think, it didn't sound likely that we'd get it by Wednesday, right? Yeah. What I'm, I think what I would like to suggest is that either the full 140000 for the detailed design be left in the budget or a portion of it with the focus that our first movement on that would be to work on the design of the floor and, and see how that fits in. It may be something that also fits in with, uh, it could fit in with some facility maintenance funds depending on how that goes, uh, some of the library funds <laughs> depending on how that goes. So it, it feels to me like a puzzle that's in the process of being worked out, um, but we would need some funds to do that. And so if, if I guess my recommendation here is to not um, completely remove the 140000 for the detailed design, but just kind of um, target a first effort on the floor portion of the, of the project and, and actually see if we can move forward with that. Right, and that is something that we could put in the policy resolution to Th that would be the intent track of, of that, the, that, that that's, would, right. that's the intent of that. That's right. So I think I'm going to turn it now to Councilmember Siemens and Councilmember Smith since you put these items on the reconciliation right. list if you want to adjust that. Councilmember Smith? Thank yeah. you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my position of putting this um, on the reconciliation list is uh, I just don't think it's appropriate at this time uh, to spend uh, additional monies in the police department, uh, not until we figure out um, who we're going to hire as a police chief. Um, I just, I mean, this has been on the, uh, the list of to-do projects for the city, I think, ever since I've been on the council. Uh, and I don't think waiting another year uh, would be that big of an issue. All right, so you want to keep it on. All right. So well, then we'll discuss it, I think, on more on That's Wednesday fine. night. Uh, my, uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, Council Member Siemens. Thank you. My, um, as you see on this reconciliation list, uh, mm -hmm. my part, which was just doing the floor, mm -hmm. right. uh, didn't have an amount associated with that. Right. I'd uh, like to leave that on for one more week and see if the city manager wants to make a recommendation. Uh, well, it would be for two days, and so my, so that's why my, my recommendation is that that some of the hundred and forty thousand dollars, be, and I would I would think a good portion of the hundred and forty, be into that category. I think what the the city council, excuse me, the city manager had recommended is instead of calling it the police department detailed design, that we use that hundred and forty thousand dollars as filling in the atrium floor. And, right. that and the design would, that goes along with that in that section. Right. Of, the, of getting that part of the project done, but not of actually uh, using the space below it. The, the way that the detailed design, we've got a concept plan for the police department. It is something that I would like a new police chief to review. Um, the. The, but the section that is where the atrium floor is, I mean, that portion's pretty, I think, pretty much agreed to, that that makes sense. How the, how the portion behind what's now dispatch gets redivided, mm -hmm. I think, can wait a little bit. And so that's why I was, I think okay. we can do a portion first. I wouldn't necessarily get everything designed right underneath the atrium floor once it's installed because we're in this transition time, uh, both with the library and a police chief. 
that I'm uh, uh, supporting what you say, but um, right because we it's better to take one step than it is to sit on our hands. Okay, thank you. So why don't for Council Member Siemens line item? I'll just go ahead and put 140,000. Um, 140, and it, you know, I don't know that it would take that much, but I. Happy to put that there for right now. Can you raise a point of order? Yeah. I guess my concern is that it's not an increase that's already in the budget. So it's not a. It's, that's it's true. You're a right. Vote that's true. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Smith's I fully support proposal. Mr. Yes. Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I fully You're support absolutely. Mr. Smith's recommendation. What was okay. that taking the 140 out? That's taking that's the 140, 140 out. out. Right. Because then you'd need to put something in. We need right. to put in words on how this stuff is being used. Right. So I think that's that's why it's. Well, right. I, can we put them to, next to each other so Absolutely. that when we talk about yep. them on Wednesday night, hmm. we will take up first the decrease in the police department detailed design, and if people feel like they need want to vote on that and take that money out of the budget and then put that money back in the budget for the atrium design okay. floor, they can. Okay. Does that sound? So let's put that increase below that decrease, and then that's how we'll take it up on Wednesday okay. night. Is that sufficient? Councilmember Crushy, did you have something I you wanted to add? I did. Um, why, why has this can been kicked down the road so many times? I mean, because well, I know that. Partly because I, the library's taken a little bit longer to get started. Um, and there's only so many projects that we could possibly do at once, given our limited space and capacity. And there was also, I think, uh, there was also uh, feedback that we had gotten, the council, previous councils had gotten, that the project may cost far more than what the current estimate is. Yeah, we don't, we're not in a position to know what the, what that would be yeah, at this point. Okay. Great. All right. So that, so the third floor office improvements, right. the, the taking at the decrease of $80,000. Can you speak to that one? There's, um, there's $165,000 total for work on the third floor. $85,000 is from the cable grant because it affects where the IT and the cable folks are. Um, the other portion of that is to um, remove what are very strange, um, basically a mistaken way of designing things in the, in the HCD section. Um, which is a weird story I can tell another time. But it's also to make sure that the HR area has more privacy because the HR generalist just sits out in the open mm -hmm. and is answering personnel questions right there. Um, so we did want to address this. We've also pushed that back a couple times. Um, and I know that the staff would like to, to address that. So that's it's up to you if you'd like to push that off a little bit. And do we, did someone, Put that on the list. You Is did. It? You know. You put on that one. Yes, ma'am. It looks like a staff one to me. Should I'm be. taking it off. I didn't put that one on. I'll put it on. All right. <laughs> and that's mail. That counts as mail. I put the um, fifty thousand from the facilities maintenance reserve. Okay. So I hit that. You did that. No. <laughs> All right. But, but Councilmember Mail is now doing it. So. Okay. You'll <laughs> the reduction of the facilities maintenance reserve, I think uh, the mayor um, suggested because the amount that we were planning on spending from that line was less than the amount that we were planning on putting into it as part of the reserve. Um, yeah. So that's, right. that's why I added that one. And I think when we looked at the numbers, it was 75. If by Wednesday you're re-looking at things and it looks different, let us know. But that's... That was so. That's the decrease of fifty thousand from the that's facilities right. maintenance reserve. That's right. Okay. So, any other questions regarding the police, the atrium, the third floor office improvement, and the facility maintenance reserve? Yeah. Councilmember Schultz. I guess that now that Councilmember Mail has owned <laughs> the the. Third floor the third floor $80,000 thing, which addresses the human resources department, right. wouldn't it be appropriate to have that discussion now as to why Councilman Romel wants to do that? Can you ask him that question? Sure. Sure. Um, 
Uh, I have to think of the reason right now. <laughs> no, in That's general, I love answers like that. <laughs> in general, Councilmember Schultz, it's because I look at the kinds of improvements that we're making in city infrastructure year after year in mm -hmm. city buildings, and think about the challenges we face in giving out grants or dealing with tax issues. Um, and given that this is a year that we're putting two million dollars into two big road projects in borrowing for that'll start getting built, uh, and a huge library project. You know, to me, this is an example, of, and knowing that we put money into, I think, a secure space for HR last year, and I think there was another building-related uh, expenditure Yeah, we just we didn't year. get to it, and so it's, it's popping back up again. So I would just propose delaying it, because mm -hmm. to me, it's a lower priority than, you know, the other things. It's just a, it's a trade-off. Uh, okay, can I then ask a, a, a tangential question, is that on the public works building maintenance page in, in the full document. There's a big long footnote there on page 78. Special projects for FY18, mm -hmm. which I'm sure Ms. Braithwaite knows everything about. Uh, and it talks about projects funded through the facility maintenance reserve for the community center include floor replacement in the Azalea room and renovations to human resources, HCD, IT, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Is, is this what we're, we're talking yes. about affecting this? Is that, is that? That's correct. This is what we're talking about. That's these. that portion of that, yeah. Okay. But we're, in this case, we're just talking about this particular. That portion of it. We're not talking about the Azalea Room and that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you for that. I think I, think I understand. For, just so we don't forget by Wednesday night, can we put like a third floor HR yeah. office so that yeah, we all remember this conversation? <laughs> all right, any other questions on Council Member Siemens? Did you have a question? No, I don't. Okay. All right. All right, so then moving along, why don't we just then take it from the top? Um, council Member Kovar, you had put in $15,000 for a council intern. Do you want to speak to that at all? Or? Sure. The amount, I think. You, I, had, you had said 5000 No, I, mean, I, I admitted that I didn't know what the correct amount would be. The purpose of it, I think, is twofold. One is there could be um, research projects and so on um, that would be beneficial to us, but I view it mostly as something that relates to engagement with the community, and in particular, if there's a way to have it be this, that, that the participants be residents of Tacoma Park who are affiliated with these institutions. Now, I don't know if we have the ability to do that, but my sense is that we've talked a lot about how, um, in particular, young people in the city don't always feel engaged with what we're doing, understand what we're doing, et cetera. So this would be a way, to the extent that there's valuable work, which I think there would be, but of at a modest level, both in terms of the impact of, on individuals, because it would be a small program, and, and dollar-wise, to begin to introduce uh, to young people in the city what it could mean to be engaged with what the municipal government is doing. Okay. Can I Great. ask you a Council question Mayor. about that? Okay. Oh, go ahead, Councilman. No. Yeah. Um, I, I just, who is the, in, is the intern working for us? That would be that. That was the proposal. Okay. Mm -hmm. How would we share the set? Well, we'd have to we'd You're have to, to work out you? some pro. What's that? You're to share it. <laughs> you might. We'd have to work out some protocols for, for that and the number of hours. And I think honestly, and this would be something that um, maybe a city manager could talk about. You know, supervision of the person mm -hmm. probably couldn't fall on us in sort of a direct day-to-day -day sense because right. we're not really here and we don't have offices. So inevitably, it would mean that there would be some person who, uh, I'm, ge <laughs> I'm gesturing to my left here, who would have to at least make sure, yeah, it's okay to go get lunch. No, you can't copy, you know, a thousand pages on the copier for your school assignment, et cetera. Yeah, we don't, we don't so uh, no, there, would I, be, there would be some things like that that would yeah. have to be worked out, definitely. And I think it's all workable. Mm -hmm. And as I emailed or said during Art Hop to Council Member Kovar, it is a topic that I've talked to folks at Washington Adventist University about and at Montgomery College. And quite frankly, it's just a question of having the time to sit down and figure out who's the advisor, you know, who's going to oversee the person, mm -hmm. how we're going to structure it, um, yeah. and that type of thing. So, yeah. 
Uh, Councilmember Koreshi. I, I, you know, Mayor, you might have just answered my question, and maybe this was not what Councilmember Kovar had envisioned, but I, when I was thinking about interns, I was thinking also about, and you know this better than I do, Mayor, that there are students at the high school and junior mm -hmm. high level who have service requirements mm -hmm. and which, you know, presumably they're donating their time, they're not getting paid for it. Yeah, and one of the options I thought about was Don Bosco where part of their curriculum is uh, a day a week where they uh, work somewhere and, you know, that model would be okay for me too. I, I think the key part is getting younger people who might not otherwise think about what we do to be exposed to that. Okay, well, that's all I have, thanks. Yeah. The, the Don Bosco people actually do, okay. they, they get paid, a right. regular, and that money goes towards their tuition. But they get paid not, I mean, uh, I mean that could come from these same funds, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we would pay them. Yeah. Okay. And it's around 35,000. 35,000? No. Okay. All right. So we can vote on that on Wednesday night. Um, the next item uh, was the use of the city uh, bus for the village of Tacoma Park. Council Member Siemens had put this on. The city manager had raised the issue of this actually possibly being a policy question we may want to come back to at a different time. So I'm going to ask Council Member Siemens if he would like to keep this on the. I would like to uh, speak to it. Mm -hmm. I will turn on your mic so you can do that. Um, Thank you, and I uh, thank you, Ms. Ludlow, for the feedback on this. That, uh, it, and as I recall, you said it really wasn't going to require a uh, probably a budget action because the amount would be so low in your estimation after talking to Mr. Bergner. But the other um, uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about a little uh, that's related to this is that as we are encouraging our police department to be more involved in the community. And I have also encouraged us to have a closer relationship between uh, the police and the recreation department uh, as we try to reach out to our youth and uh, lead them in the right direction and also mm -hmm. work with the, the seniors in the city. Um, again, I. Uh, I would like to make sure that we have sufficient funds in the recreation budget, since right now the bus falls under recreation, uh, that we're able to accommodate, that you're able to accommodate um, trips by the police department uh, uh, working with these community groups. If if it is a city pro if it is a city program, we can work with that. We can accommodate it within the budget. The issue is not that. The issue is if somebody, if some other organization simply wants to have a bust so that they can get a group of seniors to a movie, which is what's being proposed by the village of Tacoma Park, for example, that is a problem because we don't normally just provide our bus to other organizations for their convenience. And so if there is a policy change that says that there's certain kinds of organizations that then we're going to pay for to give free transportation to, that's really a policy issue. All right. So we have two issues that I've brought up with this one thing. One is the policy issue. I would like to ask the mayor mm -hmm. uh, to put that on a future agenda, mm -hmm. not, okay. not right in the near term. Uh -huh. You've indicated that there's not going to be, right now, it doesn't look like it would be a, a real budget, significant budget impact. That's so we right. don't have to put that money on there. Right. But then my other, uh, the other piece of this is, you know, working with the police department, the recreation department, um, I, I, I've long thought since we got this bus that it's underutilized. Right. They, 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 well, they, they love to do some joint projects. I know that they've been coordinating on some of um, these focus things or whatever. So if there's something that makes sense using the bus for that, I think it's great. And then, and then the question is, you know, does the police department have a, a sufficient budget uh, for that type of community outreach that we're expecting? Uh, or is that where the money should be added? No, that's part of the police department's budget to do community outreach, and Not so just that would community fit. outreach, but also you know take the kids 
to or the seniors or whoever to the movies or whatever sure, it is. Sure, sure. They're working with the explorers right. on these things. I, I, absolutely. And I, that's in your budget? Yes. Okay. I could withdraw this request. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, if there's for some reason a question about a line, we will find the money. Thank you. Great. All right, moving on. Okay, good. Sorry, go ahead. You want to? I just wanted to confirm what, whether we were moving forward with it or not. Yeah, no, we're striking it. Okay. Council Member Siemens said strike it. Okay, the next one is also Council Member Siemens, Trees on Maple Avenue, $10,000. Would you like to speak to that at all? Another great idea. I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate the opportunity to talk about that. I think it's uh, pretty clear what I've asked for and um, just wanted to get some feedback from the city manager at this point. Yeah, we haven't, we'll have the, we'll have the um, urban forest manager look at Maple Avenue. When I drive down Maple Avenue, there's lots of trees. There's a section in front of the Franklin and a section close to Sligo Creek Parkway where they may be able to put some more street trees in there. Um, and I think it sounds nice. I know that um, one of the things that they're trying to do is um, go through systematically where street trees need to go in. and. I don't know that 10000 is the right amount. It might be less than that, but it certainly seems like a good idea. I do okay. more. Thank you. Great. All right. Um, okay, Councilor Mel, yeah. Could I ask a follow-up question would, for the would go up public down? works No, it would go down, yeah. Whether 5000 would do it instead of ten. I mean, if we can get any closer, is there a closer number? It might be like we'll be bringing an agenda item to you hopefully on Wednesday for tree planting that gives you ballpark a cost, but it's in the, you know, $200 a tree for an inch and a half caliper tree in general. So you could buy a lot of trees for okay. 200 but bucks. Can, can I say okay. this okay. wouldn't be covered by what we're doing on Wednesday? Uh, it, well, we've already identified the locations for those, and that's oh. this fiscal year. But um, we typically, the arborist uh, determines where he wants to okay. plant trees. They want to plant trees. Um, and, and that's based on conditions and spaces available and we do block by block planting so it may be that Maple Avenue would be the tree. I'm a little uncomfortable pulling out one street from the rest of the street without any other any other evaluation so uh, and, you know we're supposed to be doing the tree inventory um, in mm -hmm. this next fiscal year as well and in an ideal situation that tree inventory would guide the planting for the next 10 years so you know we'd prefer to have a systematic approach that you know move the planting forward based on uh, vacant planting spaces and existing conditions on the street. I think then, uh, Councilmember Siemens, if you'd like to keep that on there, um, taking this down to like twenty-five hundred dollars or something might be a might be a more reasonable number. I look forward to the tree arborist feedback. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Kovar, did you have another question? No. No. Okay. Sorry. That's good. Um, then the next thing is Councilmember Schultz um, asked that twenty-five hundred be added for um, the establishment of an Economic Development Commission. Would you like to speak to that? Yeah, yeah this is my big uh, expenditure <laughs> for the budget this year. Uh, but it's uh, small in that, in that sense, but I think it's extremely important in the policy mm -hmm. sense. Um, and uh, not to spend a great deal of time on it, but setting up an economic development entity, such as I'm calling it for lack of a better term in the interim, Economic Development Commission that would be comprised of a, a body of people involved in the commercial real estate, commercial, uh, in the multifamily construction business as well, uh, the, the uh, real estate development business, small business owners and some residents as well, could help sort of institutionalize um, the program that we are effectively launching this this year mm -hmm. I mean with the, because we'll be coming up this this fiscal year and, and uh, this fall with the product produced by the uh, cloudburst group uh, we will if we adopt this budget be adding a an FTE uh, on a temporary basis for for at least a while anyway in economic development and so I sort of see this uh, Economic Development Commission, almost like the third leg of a stool, such that there that, that there's going to be, there can be a, a, a community constituency mm -hmm. of not just the residential interests, but the interests of all the people who are are not on any other committee, except maybe for the facade advisory panel, 
which addresses, you know, business yeah. facade, to express the interest and peculiar points of view of, of the, the people who are making a living with regard to real estate ownership, commercial, commercial real estate ownership, and commercial real estate development in this city. And um, I think that this is something that's important because it have, could have huge positive effects on our tax base eventually. Uh, but it, it, it really uh, is something that really needs to have a, a body of individuals to be present with this subject matter uh, so that it can help advise the, the city council on a, a multiplicity of choices as we go down the road. I mean, I expect and hope and pray that the Cloudburst Project consultant will come up with an interesting list of possible things that our city will be able to cope with, mm -hmm. manage, and do. And somebody's going to have to make choices and help and help the city council make choices and prioritize things. Uh, and uh, now is just a perfect time to kind of institutionalize that so that when the HCD, or the st existing staff, is for, we already know is fully preoccupied, that there'll be th there'll be a constituency there that'll kind of like the recreation department. It's a constituency to encourage and help and advocate for recreation in that sense. I appreciate that. I, I don't think it will cost us money. Um, so and, and just from a, from a budgetary perspective, I don't think $2,500 would be yeah. needed for that. Yeah. Well, if it, if it turns out to be zero, then the only reason I say is that it, it might become part of a policy resol resolution where mm -hmm. we say that this is something that we as a city council think we, that we want to do. It's not going to cost, it's not going to be a, maybe necessarily a line item at all. Mm -hmm. It can be just absorbed into the budget. Uh, but the, okay. the nice thing about having it re connoted in the budget somewhere mm -hmm. uh, is that it says this is what the city council wants to do. <coughs> I think that's about all I need to say on it. Okay. Councilman Mail, did you have a question on this one? Or? No, I'm oh, oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, all right, so we'll vote on that on Wednesday night. Um, the next, next item I put on the list last week is um, a uh, lowering of the stormwater fee. Um, what has been proposed um, was $92 um, increase um, in the stormwater fee. Uh, first, I want to thank our Director of Public Works for her presentation on this and the work that went into this. Um, I think given the um, study that is proposed moving forward, I put to lower it to $75 for our residents. That would be a $20 increase over what they pay currently. Um, my reason for um, not bringing it all the way down uh, and, or keeping it at the status quo is because I think we have some major projects that we want to move forward with as well as the fact that there are uh, major institutions in our city that um, do not pay the property taxes but pay the stormwater fee. So I don't want to see too much of the money um, needing to come out of our uh, general funds for uh, these projects moving forward. So I thought looking, reflecting on it, and um, I know all of us received more information from uh, former Mayor Williams who uh, continues to uh, work on these issues on the Chesapeake Bay, which I found uh, very useful um, as well today. So um, I don't know if anybody has any other questions since we have Ms. Braithwaite here, um, but to, we can vote on this on Wednesday. Uh, Council Member Smith, do you want to speak to this one? Yeah. Ms. Braithwaite, can you just elaborate a little bit about uh, the new permitting because we're MS2, um, I guess municipality or whatever. Can you talk about, because the reason why you're asking for us to increase the stormwater fee, and let me just say that Tacoma Park has been a leader in this since, you know, this became an issue, and that was, I guess, in the 96. 90s, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can you just elaborate a little bit on what's going on in the state level, the federal level, sure. that we're not just trying to make up additional work for your department. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, in a, in a nutshell, um, in 2006, the uh, 
federal government through the APA established uh, new requirements on the Chesapeake Bay program. Actually, they've been evolving over the past 20 years in various various uh, attempts. The most recent attempt was in in that time frame, um, and uh, that passed through to each of the state's requirements um, and a focus on reducing certain pollutants um, and limiting those providers of pollutants to uh, what's called total maximum daily loads of certain types of uh, phosphorus, nitrogen, sediment, those types of things. Um, so the state was uh, set up the programs and policies through their permit systems to uh, control what are called uh, MS4, which is municipal separate sanitary stormwater systems, what we have. Basically, there are some cities that their sewers and their stormwater systems are combined. We don't have that situation, uh, mm -hmm. thankfully, because that's a much more expensive process. Mm -hmm. So we have separate stormwater um, that was established um, sometimes 100 plus years ago in the city. Um, based on those permit requirements, the city does have a uh, discharge permit for the city as a whole. So as a permit holder, the state requires us to meet certain conditions. Um, in the past, it had been um, you know, good housekeeping, public education, community involvement, keeping your house in order um, for things like public works facilities. Um, as the laws change to try to address the failed policies dealing with Chesapeake Bay, um, conditions were strengthened. So now jurisdictions have stronger and higher uh, uh, pollution limitations. So that transferred to us through in two forms. One is our uh, new stormwater permit, which actually we just start, they're still in the process of establishing that for municipalities of our size. Hmm. Um, there's been draft regulations published last year and that should be finalized sometime this year. In addition to that, um, the state itself established a watershed implementation plan. So the state has laid out requirements for jurisdictions to meet related to pollution. Uh, so we have those two convening uh, governing bodies that set standards for people, uh, jurisdictions like ours that have permits. So we've been at this since 2006 and trying to deal with um, stormwater management in our city and, and, and establish uh, certain policies related to environmental site design and best available technology for stormwater versus the past practices. So. Our program is geared towards uh, several ways to meet that um, treatment level and, and to meet our pollution uh, reduction requirements. So the overall umbrella of our program is to provide treatment for 20% of the stormwater that's generated from impervious areas that's not currently treated. So we've done an evaluation of how much impervious area we have in the city. We identified what 20% of that is. And now, since 2006, we've been going about the process of providing treatment for that um, quantity, which totals 79 acres of uh, impervious area that needs to be treated. Um, to get to an issue that's been raised a couple of times in the past, I know in 2012 I made a presentation on our stormwater programs. And again, it was pretty, uh, pretty new in both the state and our understanding of what the state's requirements were. Um, so following every part of the information and the trainings we'd gone to, we did an evaluation of what our um, program goals had, had get, gotten us from 2006 to 2012, and it looked like we were very much on track to meet, if not exceed, uh, the requirements of treatment. In the convenient years, the state's gotten clearer and clearer about how you calculate treatment credits, and we've clarified our understanding. For instance, uh, we had a formula to use for street sweeping. So our street sweeping credits, because we run our street sweeper twice a month from March to October, um, our street sweeping credits equal just under five acres of treatment, 4.7 acres of treatment. In 2012, we thought that was something we could do annually because we do the program annually. But we since learned two years later, no, that's a one-time deal. You run your sweeper uh, for eight to 10 months. You have to treat the streets 18, 18 times over that process. And if you do that year after year after year, all you get to claim is 4.7 in our case just under five acres. So some of the changes in, uh, in where we thought we were from 2012 to where we think we are now, 2016, have to do with our corrections of, of uh, lack of clarity about what claimed credit, as well as the state has since revised. And in some ways, they've taken some things away. They've also granted some things. So in addition to things like our bioretention facilities, which create infiltration, and our stream restoration programs, which are very productive in terms of treatment, 
um, we're now focused on some pollution reduction measures uh, in, in a more formatted way. So now we think we can gain some credit by removing, by, by weighing the amount of debris that we have our contractor take out of stormwater inlets and stormwater pipes when they do our annual cleaning. Hmm. Um, and also by weighing our street sweeping debris, it could be that we can get more credit than we're hmm. currently getting. I've probably gone on too long of a tangent, but I wanted to try to address both why our analysis of how, how, how close we are to reaching our credits has, has shifted over the past several years, and it's been sort of a twofold reason, and also answer some of your questions about what's driving this, right. and what's driving this is federal law. It, and, and I would just like to say, you know, you gave an excellent presentation last year at the uh, Chesapeake Bay uh, little conference mm -hmm. that, that was held here. Um, do you still get a lot of calls from other municipalities throughout the region that are part of protecting the Chesapeake Bay? Uh, not so much. Okay. We're all kind of head down <laughs> getting it done, um, so there's a little bit less of that. Um, probably the calls we get the most frequent are, you, how does your utility fee work? How did okay. you set that up? You know, those types of how did you, you know, how did you go through that process? So we still get those calls on occasion or when we're asked to speak on webinars and whatnot. That's usually the topic that uh, we're being asked to, um, to discuss. And I just don't want us to lose, you know, the... Uh the leadership position that the city of Tacoma Park has held um, in stormwater. You know, I think this is part of our core values of a municipality and who Tacoma Park is. So th thank you, Ms. Braithwaite. Okay. Sure. Any, uh, Councilmember Povar, do you have a question on this one? A couple of quick, quick couple of questions. Um, you met, if you don't mind, Ms. Fairthright, sorry. No, I'm not used to sweating, so <laughs> I really, I feel like, <laughs> yeah. am I nervous? We've got the Welcome fan to back our, here. Welcome, Welcome to our to world. council meetings. <laughs> so uh, you mentioned that the goal was 20% of the acreage within the city that has, uh, that is impervious. And so where does the 20% come from? That is actually uh, generated by the watershed implementation plan. So the state's directed program has cited that as a way to meet, basically for jurisdictions like ours, how, how can you prove or how can you say that you're reducing certain amount of tonnage of nitrogen, phosphorus, and the other, you know, biological oxygen demand, the other things that are considered pollutants into your water stream, you can't test everywhere and you can't So that's viewed as it. a measure that yeah, is Yeah, so they use a, that, a as the, that as the, as the tool to get yeah. there. If you yeah. treat 20% of what wasn't previously treated, you're going to reduce the amount of phosphorus, nitrogen, mm -hmm. and other pollutants based how, on that. How do you think we rate compared to other communities in the... Maryland. You know, um, that's a good question, and uh, everybody's still holding cards a little bit close to their chest, particularly in, you know, jurisdictions. We share some information and, yeah. and not others. Um, I think it is a huge reach. I think the, um, the, the uh, NPDES, the pollution limitation requirements, as well as the watershed implementation plan, um, is going to be a real challenge uh, for jurisdictions to meet. And, um, and that, that assessment really comes as a shift over time where it looked like, well, gee, we were just cooking away and getting our credits, and this was easy. One of the first realizations was, bing, maintenance, big cost of maintenance. You create these bioretention facilities. You have, to, you have to do far more than you ever do when you're maintaining a stormwater pipe or an inlet box. You can clean it once a year. You can't do that with biofilter infiltration facilities, you have to actively maintain and manage them. So that was the first sort of aha moment. And the second is, as the criteria um, and the, the way you calculate the treatment credits is getting further and further re refined, it's really, really difficult. Uh, it, it just shows you what a big culture change that's going to be across the region to really reach those levels of, of treatment and pollution reduction. Okay, so here, thanks for that information. So this is a budget process question, and I'm not sure who should answer it, but if, for example, the mayor has proposed reducing the um, fee increase so that it, instead of going up 37 cents, it goes up 20 cents. But it looks like in reading the material that all the projects are still going to be done. Because what I'm proposing is that the money get taken out of the general funds okay. to and make the difference up. So uh, what I'm proposing is that the projects that have been proposed move forward, 
but that we, this year, because of the study that's being done, that we don't um, increase the fee to the full $92, but that we increase the fee to 75, and we take the additional money that needs to do the projects out of the general funds. That's why it shows up on our reconciliation list as adding. And so the impact of that on how, well now that's just taxes in a sense, but how the fees and taxes are distributed, how does that, who does that leave out or get that wasn't Well that gets before? our large institutions, so if we were, <coughs> if we were to say just to leave our stormwater fee at the level it is now, and say we were gonna fund a, all or a portion of those projects out of our general funds, that falls only on our taxpayers. Increasing the fee will also include then institutions like the hospital, Washington Adventist University, that pay a stormwater fee, but because they are nonprofits, they do not pay property taxes to the city. And so that's why I'm arguing that we should at least increase the fee a bit to be fair across the board if we're doing these projects that those institutions should be paying the appropriate amount to pay for these projects. But So, but if you're not one of those institutions, I just want to make sure I understand then this. Then you're paying more in taxes and you're paying less in your stormwater fee. The actual dollar difference is more expensive to the taxpayer, but they don't usually notice it as much. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a in a stormwater bill, um, and so that's that's the discussion. Um, from the from the standpoint of the list of projects, I strongly strongly recommend not cutting the list of projects. How we pay for it is part of this discussion, but I really think we need to do the projects. Well, we mm -hmm. could take a look. I haven't looked at it specifically, understanding um, the proposal well enough, because um, we do have a little bit of carryover from previous years in the stormwater fund. Yeah, but it's it's not we discussed that. We looked it's at like that the other day. 000. Yeah, we looked at that the other day. It doesn't figure. it doesn't make the difference. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure where I'd come down on this, but I feel uncomfortable with the idea that I understand the argument you're making. I think, but the the fee is not a tax, and now we're sort of making it into a tax by. It would be one thing to say, let's reduce the amount and say lop off one project. I'm not sure exactly how that would be chosen. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is getting rid of, I mean, the difference between the fee and the tax seems to have sort of have to be half disappearing now. If I'm right, and I was just responding to what I heard from people, their reactions was we were, inc we were proposing an increase to $92, which seemed a big increase from 55 and if we're undertaking this study next year, um, as well as the fact that we wanted to look at ways to recognize households that were doing more, going above and beyond on um, stormwater. Right. So for me, this was sort of a, a compromise, <laughs> I guess, well, in looking I, at I how that, to but, move but forward. So we're cutting so. the fee and for everybody, agree, but, <laughs> but then slightly increasing their taxes separate from the fee cut, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. right. But, yep. it's not, but it's not necessarily the same people. That's correct. Right. It's, it's more the property owners. So the difference in if it's at seventy-five dollars, um, the hundred twenty-nine thousand five forty is just about a half a cent on the tax rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're raising a half a cent on the tax rate. Well, so let me just ask, if, if you don't mind, let's say that people were willing to contemplate, you know, not doing as many projects until we complete the survey. Would you have any thoughts on how to? on how to do that, understanding sure. that the city manager has made a yeah. strong argument <laughs> against doing that. No, well, and I, and I think and I in the that, budget document, we gave a five to six year long right. list of projects. So you could take a look at that list of projects by year and, and you know, you may have some of your own recommendations um, in terms of, of where those cuts would come from. The, the problem is what, what then we have to show the state that, about how much we're meeting our requirements. And we can't change, we have to set the stormwater fee now. Like we can't change that in the middle of the year. That's right. So that was the other reason I thought proposing a $75, the $75, because we have to propose a stormwater fee now, this time. Um, whereas, you know, looking at the projects moving forward, even though I support mm -hmm. fully funding them. Mm -hmm. 
you could review I, that I list. guess it just seems like it's set up so that we, unlike most of these other reconciliation things, we can't actually reduce this under the what we've just heard. I mean, in other you words, you can move forward. You, you to can, I mean, uh, we can't not do. I mean, <laughs> we can't not do these projects if, under this proposal, right? If, I mean, this is I, just a shifting of the money. It's the same if money. If I right? may, though, I well, think there, there, certainly, you can make some choices not to do some projects, and and then we have to live with the impacts of that. Um, it's it's the the way that I feel about it as a manager, is that when there are requirements and standards, I work f towards meeting those. Um, and so to me, the budgets for those are, have a little bit, are a little bit harder to cut because to me, part of my responsibility is to meet these requirements. There is some, maybe some wiggle room because everybody's trying to struggle through these definitions a little bit and so you know for a one time if you want to change that then then we go begging you know to the state i i prefer not to do that and i kind of go where council member smith was mentioning about our leadership in this area in the state i prefer to keep um but those so those that's why i see it as a, a i have a stronger feel than I do on some of the other mm -hmm. topics that we've discussed today. Okay, um, Council Member Mail. Uh, yeah, I want I want to propose an alternative version of this. So That's, I oh, thought you well, would. So, <laughs> unless anyone else wants to talk before. Do you want? Does anyone else want to ask questions on this one before? I, I don't have any questions. I just have uh, an opinion that I'll render when the time is appropriate, mm -hmm. so the Council Member Mail can go okay. ahead. Council Member Siemens, did you have something you wanted to say? Or are you going to no. wait? Are you good? Okay. So the, the, the uh, proposed resolution, a reconciliation item I'd like to put on the table is to lower the fee on single family properties, I guess, to, or I'm sorry, increase it, but only to $65. Uh, the other thing we learned from the city public works director's presentation was that right now the fees are not balanced between single family homes and other properties. And I can't remember the numbers, but it was, it was roughly, you know, single family homes make up 40% of impervious surface and others. We can't 60. actually, I asked that question. We, ha we can't have a. It's it, the, the fee issue rate. is the issue is the what, ERU or what it was, yeah. which basically all of the computations for anything that's not a single family home is based on the single family home price. And so. So, so we don't set the rate for single family homes based on impervious surface, but we do for the other properties? We set the rate for single family homes on the average impervious surface for single family home properties that when the study was done in the 99 or something like that. Part of the reason we want to do a new study is to get updated information, but, but legally we're, we're restricted with this ERU system. So we're not allowed to change, have a different rate for single-family homes and other properties. Right. Uh, and the rate for non-single-family properties is set just simply based on the study, the impervious surface area. It's said, right. Study. It's whatever the okay. proportion is. So, so if it's 1.5, you multiply the, the whatever the rate is for the single-family property so with that. I propose to change the fee to $65 mm -hmm. to lower the projects down to what can be funded with $65 and the associated fees that come from other properties. Um, and there's a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is that I just see a really serious process foul with this discussion, which is, and I'll use an example, um, with the Tacoma, just using Tacoma Branch as an example. Mm -hmm. We're going to spend $100,000 studying that. We're going to get the results of the study, which we're going to learn about, and then in the second year, we're going to fund or not fund, the future council will fund or not fund the actual construction for a, what we heard was a $500,000 project. In this case, it's a multi-million dollar program. Uh, for stormwater treatment that we've heard extensively about being in flux that we hear about in the context of the budget process that has a significant first year price tag and an enormous second and third and fourth year price tag. And for me, there's an there's a enormous amount of policy consideration that should go into that before it comes up in a budget. And so 
And, and so I would, I have spent a large part of my career working on Federal Clean Water Act, which is what this drives from, and specifically on the Chesapeake Bay. And I would strongly urge my colleagues not to support the proposal right now and to support a small fee increase, because there's just way too many questions in here. For example, um, we were already doing street sweeping. So as a policy matter, as a leader, do we really want to give ourselves credit for something we were doing anyway? Um, that's one example of an issue that should come up in a policy discussion. Is that what we want to focus on versus planting trees? Uh, or the public works director described aha moments about maintenance of bioretention. This is something we've been doing for long enough that we shouldn't have aha moments associated with big costs. Or, or we should. We do have those. But that's the reason to pause and think about the plan. Um, so you know, from my perspective, we increased the fee a few years ago. We should increase the fee another $10. We should look at the planning materials, the, the documentation. We should ask for somebody from the state to come and speak to us uh, next year. And we should put what it takes to, to do this in the next year's budget after having the policy debate that should go with these projects. And, and lastly, I believe that the discussion about Tacoma Park being a leader in this area is hollow. Um, and that there are very few municipalities and counties in Pennsylvania or Virginia or Maryland that are going to come anywhere close to meeting this. Because as the Public Works Director said, this is ambitious, ambitious and uncertain and a lot of new work for people. And everything I've heard from the governor's office in Pennsylvania to the governor's office in Virginia to county level jurisdictions to other cities is that this is an area of work that is really in flux. And so for us to have a big increase before having the policy consideration first is a, is a mistake. So I'm, I'm in support of going to say, and I, and I know the city manager feels strongly about this, but to me the budget process is overly, is tilted heavily toward the city manager's views in the first place. Uh, <laughs> As that's it should be. the majority of what we get to yeah. hear about, and council members' ability is to nibble around the edges. So I just want to say this is, this is absolutely crystal clear, a great place for council engagement, but it should be a two-year process, not a one-year process. And if I may, I mean, we certainly raised last year that we would need to significantly increase mm -hmm. the um, stormwater fee because before we had been using a lot of grants and we had been depleting our reserve. <coughs> and so we had given um, the heads up that we would need to raise it. Um, I do agree that it's helpful to have all these policy discussions. Um, to to uh, change the rate to $65, then we would need to cut $205,740 from the stormwater projects. Correct. So I'd, in, in terms of a resolution, I'll come up with some project suggestions, but I'd rather uh, between now and the next meeting hear from the Public Works Director on the proposed projects that would make up that $200,000 difference. All right, so the resolution item is to um, have the stormwater fee at $65. Right, so the line would be negative 205 in the, mm -hmm. the third column there. Right, and that column. would come out of the stormwater fund, not the general budget. Not the, right. Yeah. right, so that's why it wouldn't, yeah, it would be down below, not right. here. It would be down in the group, yeah, right. third green section. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Schultz, did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, actually, now I have a question for Councilmember Mayo. Huh? Point of real clarification so I can help, help me to understand. Your, if, what, is what you're saying is that Policy considerations are under consideration, not just in Maryland, but Pennsylvania and other, Virginia, other states in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And you're maybe, you're thinking that there may be a disequilibrium between the states, what one state's requiring of its uh, tier two municipalities, and say what Pennsylvania is, and that our state EPA might in fact come back and retreat from its, the standards for its water implementation WIPs, I think they're called, plans. Is that what you're thinking that might happen? I'm, so I'm trying to... I, yes. I mean, a, a lot of this is in flux. I mean, the, the, well, that's what you're saying. the whole pollution flux. diet only in, in established during the Obama administration oh. only just survived a Supreme Court challenge right. brought by the Maryland Farm Bureau and others. Right. So there's a lot up in the air, and I think in general, most people believe that Pennsylvania, or at least most people in Virginia and Maryland believe that Pennsylvania is not doing their, well, yeah, their fair share. Yeah, that part I'm aware of. Uh, what, okay, what, what I was going to say before, uh, and thank you, uh, was is that what I, I've come to understand here in the last 24 hours or less than that is that what I thought was sort of like something that over which we had incredible discretion as a city since we were 
so far ahead of the pack, <laughs> or at least we thought we were, is in fact really mandated by the state of Maryland under its current interpretation of the uh, total maximum daily loads of what we're supposed to do uh, to meet those as a, I think Mr. Bruce Williams was saying, a tier two municipality with a self-contained uh, stormwater system. And so in that sense, this is Maryland law right now. It, no, that's not correct. It's not correct. No. Correct me. There's, as this public works director said, there's this goal of getting to 20%, of treating 20% right. of your impervious surface area. But how you treat it, and therefore the cost of treating it, uh -huh. and the timeline of treating it, is all entirely up to negotiation. Oh. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying, to, I don't mean to be funny, really. I just realize that this is a learning curve here for all of us, perhaps not so much for yourself as it is for the rest of us. So just to, just to identify, um, almost exactly $205,000 comes from cutting the Devonshire and Glacewood bioretention mm -hmm. facility, the Tacoma Branch Stream Re Restoration Design, and the Tulip Avenue Phase Two project. All right, and we'll hopefully, now that we have some points of clarification here, we have two items on the reconciliation list regarding stormwater fee, and we can vote on them on uh, Wednesday. All right, moving on. The next thing is also mine, which was a uh, the creation of a tree fund for emergency assistance. Uh, this is an issue that's come up in the past and just came up again very recently with the storm that um, came through our city a, a week and a half ago. Um, and looking at the um, damage that was done and speaking with residents, um, I'm proposing that we put in, and I asked the city manager who discussed it with the uh, head of public works what would be uh, an appropriate or look like an appropriate amount of money to put in a fund. It was um, $25,000, and we would look at um, setting this up similar to some other programs that we have, like the exterior home repair program. Um, so this is really geared towards people who, um, you know, when there is a storm or other hazardous tree um, that needs to be taken down um, immediately or a limb. Um, and, and they don't have the funds. And they do not have the funds, um, and their insurance is not covering it, um, would be able to apply for this. And we already have pretty good systems in place for these types of things, so. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, may I ask? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'm not me. asking you yeah. to vote. Just uh, any yeah. questions since we have. I just yeah. sort of wonder how far $25,000 would, would uh, Go. Well, we just took an estimate about the kinds of things we hear about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. that was the suggestion of the public works director. So I if give some deference I, to that. I'll mm -hmm. give deference to that. <laughs> All right. Um, and just yeah, go ahead, one go more ahead. question. I, I think this is something just given the sort of uncertainty, we would have a policy discussion vote and create some process before we started putting out money. Oh, yeah. We have, oh, yeah, have to establish have to a process. process. Up, like, yeah, like, like a, a grant program or something. Right, because, okay. yeah. And then it would come okay. back to us, yeah. Thanks. But since we're doing budget, let's yeah. <laughs> do it now. Right. Um, all right, so the next items were, are uh, right now in the proposed budget, there is $150,000 in uh, community economic development improvements. This was money that is being proposed to be put in the budget so that when Cloudburst comes back to us with their report, there is money already allocated to put in place some of their recommendations. Um, it's, we have on the table taking out the whole 150,000, taking out 100 of the 150,000, or taking out 50,000 of the 150,000. Um, so I don't know if we need to speak to that or can, it, I think it's pretty clear and we can just discuss it more on Wednesday. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, the next item is the decrease is the reduction in the ADA sidewalk work that Councilmember Mail put on for a decrease of $100,000. Anything you'd like to say to yeah, that? Yeah, just the police chief's salary is self-explanatory, right? Yeah, and right, the and city I manager went through those already. Yeah. 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 Um, just because my name's next to it, I wanted to oh, okay. answer you want questions. Own it. Right. And I, just put, and I, I don't I just think put, I really need to right, answer I questions. just put it for one more month, um, so that's, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, on the ADA sidewalk work, uh, 
we, we've had money in our sidewalks for every year that I've been on council. I think it started just a couple years that's before right. uh, I joined council. And that sidewalk work is fantastic. New sidewalks matter to residents. Sidewalks that are accessible to both to people with disabilities and people who don't have them, um, sidewalks that are walkable without tripping, without falling, mm -hmm. uh, are really important. Right. Um, and we have had a debate back and forth about uh, you know, the ADA work versus the new sidewalk work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really appreciate that the city and the public works director have put um, work on state highway sidewalks, which are some of our worst mm -hmm. and most used sidewalks uh, in, this, in this list. But I'm just proposing a $100,000 reduction because I think we can still deliver the kinds of service and change and improvements in the quality of our sidewalks with slightly less funding, $100,000 less funding uh, in that work than we have here proposed. Um, and I think at some point, what is, the, what is the number right now for new sidewalks in the budget? It's 500000 for, for new each. sidewalks. Uh, oh, for, I'm sorry, for each sidewalk? For, for ADA and new sidewalks. 500000 each, yeah. yeah. And with, I, with the ADA, it's uh, 300000 for city sidewalks and 200000 for state highway sidewalks. Right. And, and I just think at some point in the future, the new sidewalk piece will um, tail down and One, we'll be able to put even more would money love that. into the ADA, ADA and sidewalk replacement work. So I just think we could go a little bit slower. And um, you know, this level of sidewalk construction is ambitious already. I know from past years we did, in some years we did less and still uh, weren't able to fund it. So that's, that's the basis for proposing it. Great. Any questions on that? Yeah, just a quick, where, where, in terms of ADA uh, upgrades, obviously that's a, there's a finite number of those. That's right. Where, the, are, where are we in that? Most of the city, of except for some of Ward 1, has had, of the city street, city sidewalks, mm -hmm. um, has been corrected. Mm -hmm. So we still have Ward 1 sidewalks. We're estimating about $300,000 worth. Then one of the things that we've not addressed at all is sidewalks along state highways, where there's a good amount of work to be done. Really? And um, like, what we would like is to be able to start doing that ADA work. Um, and I think that that will keep us busy for quite some time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Great. All right. Um, let's see. Where are we here? The next item was um, Councilmember Kovar put on the list um, uh, to take out the $100,000 extra for the police pension. I don't know if you want to speak to that, Councilmember Kovar, or we can. I will speak to it briefly. Mm -hmm. I think the key question is what the actuaries recommended, which we're following, which we have been following. And according to the information I believe from um, Ms. Chung, the finance director, we're putting in about 1.3 or 1.4 million in the coming year, if I remember the number correctly. Yes, it is 1.39 million. Right. And so it's difficult for me to see that I mean, 100,000 is a round number that is just 100,000. It's not as if we're saying that is the amount that will this year make us whole. And I, to me, with the actuaries recommending that an amount that we're in line with, I propose the reducing it by that amount. Great. And I believe Councilmember Mail had a question. Was it last yeah, week? Yeah, still, I still Thursday. haven't gotten any. I, okay. I need okay. to follow up with the actuary. Okay. Because, yeah, I'd like the answer to that question, too, <laughs> you raised. All right. Um, and then the la next thing is um, decrease in the police department budget that Councilmember Siemens put on our list last week. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, since the last week's meeting, I have had an opportunity to speak with many of my colleagues here on the council, and I uh, also appreciate the uh, information that Deputy, Ma Deputy City Manager Dan Weber uh, sent to us. Um, there were uh, several different uh, uh, issues that I mentioned last week. Um, one was with the uh, police vehicles that we purchased. Um, I, uh, I think it's time, it's been quite, quite a while since we talked about uh, the type of vehicles that we buy for patrols and for other police uh, functions, and um, I think it's uh, time that we talk about that again. I, mm -hmm. uh, 
I know that we've been purchasing SUVs for majority of the vehicles. Right. Um, I'm surprised to see that other jurisdictions aren't doing it to the same degree that we are. And so I'd like to just discuss it and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and see if there is an opportunity for us to save money uh, in that regard. So um, I'm going to reduce my request by that amount. Uh, the second one. Uh, so what, what's the amount? I'll, I'll get to the total when we get okay. to the end, okay? All right. <laughs> and um, the second uh, uh, uncertainty that I wanted to talk about was our purchase of uh, weapons. Um, and again, I, I know in some of the information that we got uh, from the deputy city manager, there, there was a. Um, statement that uh, we were replacing old guns and I'm not sure what that means and it seems like if we're doing our proper oversight we should understand what that means. Um, is that a, uh, a state uh, training commission standard? Is there a, another best practices from the police uh, that uh, define what an old gun is and when it needs to be replaced? Um, but that's just an example. I think this whole area is again an area that the council has paid little attention to in the past, but, I, but as we do our oversight and, and look at doing more uh, responsible oversight of the police department, I think it's an area where we need more information. So again, I um, uh, would ask that uh, the uh, mayor uh, put a discussion for both the vehicles and the weapons on future agenda. And so I'll be reducing my, uh, my request by that amount also. And then the, uh, the third thing that I brought up last week was the emergency response team, which is really the, uh, you know, also known as the SWAT team. Uh, and that's an area that has um, uh, it's developed uh, within Tacoma Park over the last few years. And um, typically SWAT teams uh, require a great deal of, uh, of funding uh, for training, overtime, equipment, and uh, uh, a lot of other factors go into that. Uh, again, I appreciate the information that we got, and after talking with my colleagues, uh, I'm willing to say let's not try to inject that into the budget discussion, but let's uh, hold that uh, for a future discussion too. So. Basically, I'm asking that uh, all of those things be uh, included in upcoming agendas. And, um, and with that, I'm going to withdraw this uh, $100,000 reduction. And I have one last thing since I have the floor and the <laughs> microphone's open. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that our $40,000 uh, that we have had in the last two years in the budget for police community relations uh, it's in the budget, in and, yes. And available for use. Absolutely. And um, so I think it may be time to put that in the agenda sometime mm -hmm. too so that we can actually do it. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. And uh, <laughs> um, I would add another $20,000 to it, but uh, uh, in light of all the other things on our list, maybe we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that when we uh, Well, when well we thank you. I, one one thing that we have been pleased about is that some of the things that we intended on paying for with the $40,000 have been donated to us for vo by volunteers, which we appreciate. So we still have those funds to, to use for other for others, uh, activities similar to that and to improve it. All right. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Siemens. And we will definitely get those items on the agenda right away. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilmember Mayo? I do. I'd like to put the, the um, reconciliation item back on for $100,000. Um, and to me, it just it speaks to our uh, values as a city, that our police department budget has been growing and growing and growing <laughs> for years and years and years. This is a really small number. Uh, and I really So how much are you putting on? $100,000. What's sorted on the piece of paper? OK. Um, and I just, for, for me as a council member, I don't feel like, given that crime is lower, it's not just that we're solving more crimes. Uh, it's that crime is lower, that we need to find a way to shift our priorities to things like housing. Not to do both and keep doing them at a, the same growth rate, but to figure out how to really shift. Um, so to me, things like programs, rec programs that help uh, youth, 
that uh, help more people um, have prosperous futures, uh, housing programs that he keep the diversity of housing, both apartments, um, and single family homes that people live in that are affordable. Those are the ways we need to go. And it, it starts with small changes, uh, like $100,000 less into the police budget. Um, so I don't have a specific idea of where that is. I'd remind my colleagues that every year our budget is, there is, we spend millions less than council authorizes. Uh, so I don't actually believe that $100,000 represents a real cut to anything based on the last 10 years of budget data. Uh, but I want to keep that item on the reconciliation list. Okay. Council Member Schultz, do you have a question on that? No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll debate that then on uh, Wednesday night. Um, the last thing um, is the inventory tax um, that right. we did not discuss. Um, Council Member Kovar, you have um, put this on. Um, and we've gotten some information For, yeah, from Yeah, why don't I go ahead and address yeah. um, some of the information that we've learned. Um, the first thing is that to actually remove, to restructure how we do the personal property tax, such as to change the lowest, you know, take out a certain amount yeah. of, of uh, inventory out of the compilation or to even eliminate the inventory tax but to keep the rest of the personal property, that requires a more of a change at the state level that needed to have already been approved and we've not had that full discussion. Mm -hmm. um, we can change the personal property tax rate uh, if we would so choose. Um, but at this point, if there was um, really a, a, a desire to change the inventory tax portion, <coughs> that would not be effective till FY19, so this number would be zero. So there's kind of a structural catch-22 in the sense that yeah. as each budget period comes up um, prior to that, we couldn't have done it because, hey, it's not budget time and tax time. And then when we get into budget and tax time, well, now we can't do it except because it will be effective at the future time. So I guess the question is, and obviously my colleagues may not even share the, the idea of doing it, but if one were to make a change, is it, would it be necessary to make the change now knowing that it would only apply in another year? I, I or is it to find is some policy sort of magic question. point at which yeah, it could be done? I think this is a policy question. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that policy, whether, whether you get agreement for the resolution that accompanies the budget this year or otherwise take place within the next couple, few months, can, should happen. And, and I, you know, one of the things that I've been waiting for and hoping for is some direction from the economic development consultants about what's the most effective way to both have a business friendly environment but also ensure that they pay their fair share towards the services that, that we provide them. And so there's that. Um, what I, um, so I think that the issue really is that we just need to pick a date by which you make a decision. Mm -hmm so that we are able to then but So let me ask you that. So let's say we didn't do it now and we picked a date maybe after the cloudburst comes in. So we're talking about the fall. Can we change our tax rate? In we the send of the, the request in into the state, but but it won't show up as part of a as part of a change in the expectation until for preparation of the FY19 budget. Then during the FY19 budget, you still have the responsibility of setting the personal property right. tax rate. So you may keep the rate the same knowing that the inventory portion has changed, but that's where the, that's where the date of the budget action takes place. So what would happen, I mean, could we, are you saying it's literally impossible to change the rate in this budget now? It's, it was, you certainly can change the, the rate. rate. You cannot change the structure. You can't remove, you can't take like a section off of the inventory as you had suggested. Right. Or get rid of the, but you certainly can change the personal property tax rate. Okay. Because that's yeah. something we just give to the county and they just compute. The issue about changing the structure is it has to go through SDAT at the state level to change their way that they look at the forms that come in. Okay. Well, with that explanation, I mean, mm -hmm. can this be something that in two more days we just sort of see if there's a proposal that might work? I mean, I understand. If you want to put one forward, yeah, sure. Okay. Before Wednesday night. Okay. Um, 
Sure, that's fine. I'll get. I'll consult with maybe consult with you a little bit more on that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I do. I mean, we did take this up. I think the the it has taken more time, um, and particularly with the one business that had an issue, yeah, took uh, up a great deal right. and continues to take up a great yeah. deal of staff time. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. I think we had hoped that we would have had this discussion earlier, um, but not anticipating some of right. the things right. that we had to do to help this one business right. in our community. Right. So. Right. Can I just ask a follow-up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we could, though, use, for example, the policy resolution to say, to record for the next council. Absolutely. That, you know, it's our belief that the system should change mm -hmm. and that the next council should make a decision before before this date. Yep. In That's order right. to inform the budget process and the, the winter yeah, work I think sessions it'd be a good idea. Mm -hmm. And so then we could sort of put a timeline on it that would help. Right. That we haven't had before. That's that right. We, yeah. Exactly. I think that'd be good. Mm -hmm. So all right. Um, um council, yeah, Council Member Schultz, sorry. Comment is that just to clarify is that we could uh, in, hypothetically set the, in, the personal property tax rate at zero. That's and the, true. And, and that, that's, we can do that this, this week, let's say. And what that means is that all the businesses that now pay personal property tax wouldn't notice it until July 1st of 2019 because that would be the beginning no. of the, no. the fiscal no. year. That would affect this year's bill. This year. It would also mean that we would have to remove $375,000 yeah. of revenue from right. the FY18 mm -hmm. budget. Yeah. All right, so it would. That would be required. But the, 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 then the question comes out, well, what's the policy here? And Ms. Ludlow is saying is that it raises the point, the valid point of we need to have some way by which we want businesses to pay for the services that the city provides to businesses. Now, my, my comment on this, and I'll be very short, uh, is that the personal property tax is not a fair way to, to accomplish that goal, which I think is a very important goal. So I think businesses should all pay, but some businesses pay almost nothing, and others are just hit by enormous amounts of money. So. To me, it's just the personal property tax is a bad, <coughs> bad tax because it's it's a treat, similar business treats businesses generically unfairly. That's all I wanted to say. Okay. Great. I think that's. I think our that's list. it. I'll I'm make the changes on the reconciliation list. I still have a little bit of information and research I need to do. Okay. And we'll see you on Wednesday. See you Madam Wednesday. Uh, City Manager, and in order to prevent me from adding 50 bucks as a reconciliation item to the list, can you get us a fan at this end of the stage <laughs> for Wednesday You night? know, it started over the air and somehow. I oppose that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what I've been hearing? Yeah, they got a okay. fan over there. Oh, they got a fan All right, over there. I kept hearing this noise. <laughs> Hey, look how much more talk they've made this end of the table. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. over here? No, I'll bring the thing out. It's crazy. Sure. It's like, the last two weeks have been ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, and in fact, they'll see it. Uh, on Wednesday, it'll be up on the table. Look at the change. Give me a break.